is a presentation of Fox Sports. Welcome to Coors Light Fox College Football. It's a new era here in Kansas. As a familiar face to big stage football has come to Lawrence to help jolt the Jayhawks back to life. Today they host the Owls from Rice who hope to erase the memory of a rough season opener with an upset on the road in Big 12 country. Welcome to Lawrence, Kansas for Fox College Football from Memorial Stadium. It's the Rice Owls taking on the Jayhawks of Kansas. Hi everybody, Joel Myers alongside Brian Baldinger and welcome to Lawrence as the Jayhawks under a new regime look for their second consecutive win and Brian will try to get it done behind two very talented running backs. It's what they do best right now, Joel. They run the football and they got two really talented running backs. The first is Tony Pearson. You know, he's 5'10", he's 170 pounds, but blinding speed. It was on display last week on his 20 carries, 124 yards, and that touchdown run. And when he's not getting it, then the Juco All-American Taylor Cox is. He's a bigger back, 210 pounds. You can see him. He's got a violent stiff arm there. He runs over ball carriers. And so, really, that's what you're going to see today. Featured two running backs and a good offensive line. Now, for the Rice Owls, they're going to be led by quarterback Taylor McCarg. And look, he had a good day last week. He ran for 95 yards, a career high. And Rice does a little bit of everything. You'll see the option. They'll spread it out. They'll let him throw it. And really, I think if Rice has a chance today, it rests on the right arm of Taylor McCarg. It is a classic early autumn afternoon as Rice makes their very first trip to Lawrence. It's Conference USA. Take it on the Big 12 when we come back. Fox College Football presented by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. Also by Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price every day. And by Ford, it's the built tough truck event at your Texas Ford dealer. Ford, the best in Texas. Well, we welcome you back once again to Lawrence, Kansas, as we're joined now by the third member of our team, Jim Knox. Jim. All right, thank you, Joel. Talk to Kansas new head coach Charlie Wise before the game, and he's excited to build something special here in Kansas. He realizes it will take some time, but I'm talking to some of his players. They're buying into it. After all, Charlie, 33 years of coaching experience, 16 in the NFL, four Super Bowl rings, and something else, guys. As we look into the stands, he already has his own fan club. Charlie's Angels, it spells out. <laughs> and a win today, Joel and Brian, and it equals the amount of total wins from last season. That is two, and who knows, maybe more fan clubs throughout the stadium. Joel. Who knew Charlie would have some angels? That's beautiful. <laughs> well, a new kicker for Charlie Weiss, as he mentioned to us yesterday, and it's going to be Nick Prolago. A sophomore walk-on from Olathe because last week it just didn't reach the end zone. And Charlie wants a guy that's getting it 8, 10 yards in. Well, remember, Joel, the new rule changes in college football is they've moved the kickoff up to the 35-yard line. So what he's looking to do is eliminate the kickoff return here by sailing this ball through the end zone. Kansas won the toss. They have deferred. Their option is the second half. So Prolago, his very first career kick with McGuffey. And more waiting back deep. Man, the sidewinder does exactly what Charlie was looking for. Eight, nine yards into the end zone. It's good coaching. So he's got a job for at least one more kick. Yes, he does. <laughs> They're on a short lease when Charlie's in charge. And there's Taylor McCarg. And he did a good job mixing run and pass. And they're worried about McCarg running the football. 95 yards last week. But his Academy Sports Right Stuff player, his key guy, it is going to be Sam McGuffey. Took a beating last week as well, Joe. He was sacked six times, and they want to try to protect him a little bit better behind a young offensive line. Opening up in the gun and a bunch formation. How about that one outside there, huh? And looking at the ISO on the near side, and it's complete. Good yardage on first down. So it goes to the Owls. Jay, Philip Gaines, make that Jordan Taylor actually. Taylor's got it. 
Sam McGuffey led the team last week with eight catches. Transfer from the University of Michigan from Houston. Back on the field right now. Yeah, they're not going to go in a hurry, but they're going to make you line up in a hurry, aren't they? They're going to give you the illusion that they're going hurry up, then they're going to take their time. It's Taylor, and it's wide, and almost deflected right into the hands of the defensive back on that side, Tyler Patman. Well, that's really what Taylor has to work on. What he worked on this past week was better footwork to make his throws more accurate. And that was a throw that really Jordan Taylor, little bubble screen on the outside, you'd love to be able to complete that. Peterson's in the backfield with big back at 6'2", 220. They only need a yard. Man, where to get it? Spinning, I believe he's going to be short. No, he didn't get it. He's short of the 35 where he needed to go. Holden Thorpe got underneath. Low man wins, and he was low. Yeah, and this is really the strength right now of this Kansas defense is the front. There's a big time hit by Thorpe there, making that stop, getting underneath him, like you said, Joel, and that's where he met him. Legs stop, and then they finish and clean up. So that's a great start for Kansas defense here to get a three and out. McDougal waiting for the punt. And as it hits, it'll be scooped up across the 30. And Kansas has it for the first time at their own 32. So only a 34-yard punt into a pretty good breeze. And Dane Chris, our right stuff player, coming into the game and playing last week as Charlie Weiss told us he wasn't gun-shy, playing for the first time in two years. Well, he was a college graduate of Notre Dame, and he had more eligibility left. And when Charlie got the job, he made the phone call to Charlie. Charlie made the phone call to him. They hooked up. He's here. He's their starting quarterback. He's trying to improve upon a pretty average day throw the ball last week. But now they're going to go wildcat instead. Yeah, Peter Pearson across the 33 at the 34. Chris originally, as you mentioned, called Charlie Weiss for advice, and he asked Charlie, what do you think I should do? And he said, well, look at Russell Wilson's gone from Wisconsin. Look at Wisconsin. Look where Joe Flacco was at Delaware. They coached their quarterbacks up. And then he said, a couple of weeks later, I took this job, and I then I called him back and said, I have a third option for you. Yeah, and you know, it, 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 the big thing is he gets to extend his college career, get another year under his belt. Again, they're still in the, the Wildcat look here. And a little jack with a reverse, and look who's going to throw the football. He's hit. It's a jump ball, and intercepted. Almost taken away from his own man, but picked off. And coming up with it, out of the secondary, Bryce Callahan. So they hit Dane Crisp as he was releasing it on a gadget play that backfires on the Jayhawks. So the interception by Callahan. And all of a sudden, it's very quiet in Lawrence as the Owls with good field position. They'll have the ball when we come back. Dane Chris set up at wide receiver on that gadget play, and it backfired to the Jayhawks. Well, Christian Covington got penetration here and hit him just as he threw it right on the thrown arm and forced that ball up where Callahan was able to intercept it. So good penetration by Rice to be able to force that turnover. Questionable call by Park by Charlie early in the game. Rice from the 45 of Kansas. McHard with time and the receiver. He's got a first down to Dante Moore. That's a good throw. Good throw. A little bit behind Moore, but yet even with contact there at the collision point, uh, nice job of getting the ball out of McHard's hands here quickly and on the quick slant. Zone coverage on that play, and he threw it to the right spot. Already in field goal territory because of the strength of Boswell, the place kicker for the Owls, a Rose Award candidate. From the 33, McHard looking on a double move and overshooting is tight end Vance McDonald, the senior from Winnie, Texas. Coverage with the strong safety, Lubbock Smith, and good coverage. Excellent protection that time by Taylor McCarr. And for him, I should say, behind an offensive line that today, Joel, with their five offensive linemen here, they have a combined 25 starts in college football. But look at that. You can't ask anything more. That's a perfect cut. McCarr overthrew McDonald on the throw. Play coming in from the side. And the blitz off the edge, but the running, the option the other way, and a good read. McCarr 
Clark inside the 30 down to the 29. So running away from the corner blitz and Tharp makes the stop. You know, last week, Taylor McCarg, he was almost knocked out of the game right before the half. And he's now wearing that Kevlar body protector. Uh, the stuff that all the NFL quarterbacks were wearing instead of a, a, a grip protector. And uh, to take some of the punishment away from the shots he just took. He was sacked, as you mentioned, six times last week. He was not wearing that protective gear. It'll be third and six. Extra rusher and almost intercepted. The deep safety had it go in and out of his hands. It was there for the taking for Lubbock Smith. Well, they came after him that time, too. A two-man blitz from the secondary. They're going to come after him right here, right through what we call the B-gap over the guard. And that was that almost looked like it was helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit on the quarterback. Really took a shot, and Lubbock Smith almost had the interception. Yeah, the record-setting place kicker for the Owls hit a 53-yarder, his first of the year last week. So Chris Boswell in. It is going to be into the wind. A little more than 36, almost make it 47 yards away. And he's got it. It is points off the turnover. So let's call it a 47-yard field goal for Boswell. Boy, has he been money for the Rice Owls, David Baylor. We'll come right back as the Owls capitalize early. Welcome back once again to Memorial Stadium on the campus of the University of Kansas. What a magnificent setting on a perfect day between 75 and 80 degrees of kickoff. Joel Myers, Brian Baldinger, Jim Knox down to the sideline. And we'd like to welcome all of you that have been watching the Tulsa Tulane game. And our thoughts and our prayers right now, all of us here mm -hmm. with Fox College football with Devin Walker of Tulane, who was injured in that game and is stable and they're looking over the hospital right now so our thoughts with Devin right now uh, the air went out of the stadium there as everybody looked on to see just how he was going to really kind of respond to a vicious hit so hopefully everything is going to work out fine. coming over to the nearest side to make it yes and it's picked up by the shears kind of a coffin corner as it worked for rice didn't it and he puts it on the ground at the 18 Scrambled. Did the Owls take it away again? You're out. You're out. You're and out. It and is. it is Rice's ball. And Rice is in. <laughs> Rice has got the ball deep in Kansas territory at the 18. I thought DJ Bashirs was awfully careless with this ball here. He got picked. He just got a kidney shot right from the back side of him. See that ball is kind of away from his body right now as he's fighting for extra yards. Never put two hands around it. Alex Francis forced yeah. it, the defensive back out of Missouri City, Texas. So all of a sudden, they are stunned. And they've got it to the Kansas 18. This will test your defense. Empty backfield for Taylor McCarr. Good pocket protection and off the fingertips of an available tight end once again, Vance McDonald. Was it hot? No, I mean, that ball was, he, he, he was just too high. He had McDonald open. I mean, look, McDonald is 6'5". They've got two six foot five tight ends, and he really had him right where he wanted him. Now, McCarr goes off, and so look for the wild owl formation right now for Rice. Charles Ross is in there. Yep. It's Jackson at quarterback now, giving it off, and on the spin, Charles Ross. So they go with the backup, the redshirt freshman, Drivis Jackson, out of Cedar Hill, Texas, and he is fast as well at six, even at 200 pounds. So he can definitely run the option. And he's brought down by Oporum. Well, you know they like uh, that wild owl is their version of the wild cat. Everybody seems to have one. Everybody is going to be waiting with uh, anticipated breath tomorrow as Tim Tebow played for the Jets, but. They like a guy that can throw it, and Dreyfus Jackson's the backup quarterback, and McCarg back on there at quarterback now on third down. It'll be third, close to six. Good pocket protection again, and on the ground, inside the tip, taken away on a 50-50 ball. The interception going to Greg Brown. Well, he led the team in tackles last week, but that was a great individual play of coming through the shoulder of the receiver and taking the ball away. Great example of 
when the ball is in the air, it's just as much yours as it was the receiver. We're coming back to Lawrence, Kansas, with the Rice Owls up 3 nothing. Kansas gets the ball back, but time for a Mazda game break as we check in now with Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen. Guys. Joe, we'll be here all day updating you on what's going on around the nation, but let me show you what happened to Penn State today. Visiting Virginia, down a point, no time left on the clock. Sam Ficken, ooh, his fourth miss of the day. Remember, Anthony Fair, their regular kicker, transferred to Texas. They miss him today. Joel. Boy, huge play in that game. So, we want to see a game decided like that, Joel. <laughs> well, that was the case last week. And it didn't work out for Rice, but they had three blocked extra points. The specials mean so much. The kicking game. That's Tony Pearson with the first down carry as he takes it between his tackles. Across the 10, out to the 12. Strong shoes, Charlie Wise told us of this team, his tailbacks. The depth of this team, the tailbacks. Let's see if they're featured. Yeah, I mean, and, and really behind, in front of that, is the offensive line that has a great deal of experience, especially on the left side behind Tanner. Hawkinson and Dwayne Zlatnik. Those guys got 76 games of experience. And look at the rushing yards UCLA yeah. had last week uh, against the Rice Owls. Well, they had three runs last week of 70 yards or more. And so really it was the big runs that really hurt them a week ago. And you can see what Kansas did, the success they had on the ground last week with 268. As you're looking at one of the Owls now. So we're just five minutes into this game and we've already had Three turnovers. Yeah, I know. It's, 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 nobody can hang on to it as the coaches come out and take a look at Christian Covington, uh, the redshirt freshman defensive tackle, Father Grover in the Canadian Football League Hall of Fame. He's down. He's the one that uh, put the hit on Dane Christ on the opening play that forced the ball to be intercepted. You just joined us. It's not a real warm day. Actually, it's a really beautiful day. So as opposed to where we were last week, about 103 on the field in Waco, it's about 75 to 80 at kick. You can see that uh, Covington is right in the middle. He's got the protective knee braces on as well. But you can see the back falls right into the right knee and kind of collapses it. And he grabs it immediately. So even with the brace on, the protective brace, even that, didn't stop it from the initial uh, injury. But it looks okay just walking off it. Yeah, that's a great sign. Good sign. And as you mentioned, his dad had a sensational career with the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the CFL. The Canadian League Hall of Famer. It'll be second and seven at the 12. There's him breaking the initial tackle. And then you see the speed of Tony Pearson, the sophomore from East St. Louis, Illinois. It was. I mean, it was a quick hitting play right up the middle, right behind Marangeli and, and Zlatnik right here. I mean, just right up the middle. So nice job kicking off. Nice block by Tanner Hawkinson on the linebacker. But at least right that time, the safeties converged and were able to get him to the ground. It's about four. And they also talked about the patience of the running backs, that they don't run themselves out of place early. Well, I mean, what I liked about Pearson, Joel, and what we saw on the, on the big quick hitter was at 170 pounds, he's not afraid to take it in between the tackles there. And uh, sometimes you just hit him with blinding speed the way he does in that burst, and you can beat a lot of arm tackles. Right, is the fourth best player at any position coming out of the state of Illinois' senior season in high school. Good throw by Chris. Man, he's got Damon Patterson. A first down for the Jayhawks, out to the 39. Good quick decision by Dane Chris that time. Just flooding the zone with short routes. And uh, really that time, Patterson just sat right in the zone and was able to play pitch and catch. So from the 39, Bourbon joins Pearson in the backfield. And out of the gun, Chris, in a different looking formation, finds Kill Pick. We had a very nice game on opening 
Saturday of the season. He had a career best 81 yards in receiving. And Joel, on that last play, I drew the safety dropping down, trying to stop the run. And I think this was an audible by Dane Chris. He saw the one safety back, a little hole over there, kind of looked at the defense, saw what they were trying to do to stop the run, and, you know, and dialed up the quick pass. Little bubble action on the outside. Patterson torpedoed on the play. Exceptional play on the outside. Callahan, who had the pick, he gets the stop. Jim Knox, what's the latest? All right, Joe, right here, Christian Covington directly behind me, trying to work out the right knee. He's going to be fine, guys. They had him over on the training table, checked out A-OK. -okay. He'll be back in shortly. All right, good news for the Rice Owls. Some big legs, aren't they? Well, he's the underneath tackle. <laughs> That's how they're built, like fire hydrants. Outside, it's available again. Patterson makes the first one miss. And then a pop with a flag, an extra 15 yards. And that's so tough when a guy is running that fast to be able to see that he's out of bounds already. I know, you know, he forces you to run under control. He made the first guy miss, uh, you know, and then the second guy comes over to clean up and he gets penalized. After the play was over, personal foul, number 24 in the defense, lays it. The 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. The first down. It's Paul Porras, the junior from Scottsdale, Arizona. Well, you're going to see right here on the outside, the guy that initially misses the tackle is J Jared Williams. And then late is Porras to the party. Yeah, he's well out of bounds. He's just got to play under more, more under control. That's all there is to it. From their own nine, it's a first down of the 20 now. Pocket holds up well. well. That's a good throw to the outside, Baldy. It's a first down inside the 20. Make it the 17-yard line on a long throw to Patterson. Now, that's the old-style, you know, NFL play. Under center, play-action pass, fake to the back, kind of pirouette in the pocket. Now, Patterson is trying to get himself some leverage. He motions in, and then he comes back out. And he gets that whole side of the field to work in. And uh, that was an impressive pass by Chris to get it to him. Good-looking drive right now by the Jayhawks. Two tight ends. A lot of tight ends, constantly motioning him this time towards the play. Big hole closed in a hurry, and a nice play by Cody Bauer. Otherwise, it may go into the end zone. So that was a two tight end set. They motioned the one tight end across the formation to get an extra blocker to the point of attack, and that's going to be something that uh, the Rice Owls are going to have to deal with here this afternoon. Drive started back on the nine. It's going to be the tenth play, and Chris. The catalyst. He's five of five on this drive. Get the Pearson. The crash off the edge. Gaines was the first one there. The defensive back. Will be short of the first down by four. Really, they were, they spent a great deal of time this week, the Rice Owls, working on tackling. Because last week was the first game, you know, against UCLA, a big division one opponent, Pac-12 team with a good running back and really you can only practice tackling so much in practice without risking the chance of getting guys hurt. Third and four now for the Jayhawks. Time for Chris running out. He's got a man off the fingertips of Patterson. Right there and a backpedaling throw and a strong one again from Chris. It was a strong throw, and he waited as long as he possibly could. This took a long time. A little post corner out, working on Callahan. You can see great effort of going up for the football just a little too high, and I think the throw kind of sailed on him a little bit because he got hit just as he released it. Ron Doherty in for the field goal attempt of 28 yards. Took over the job late last season. The final four games. They put it down now at the 19. A 29-yard attempt. And it is all even in Lawrence, Kansas. So just like the Owls, it's points off a turnover for the Jayhawks after the pick by Greg Brown. And we are even at three at Memorial Stadium. Up on the hill looking at Memorial Stadium. And welcome back once again to Lawrence, Kansas. Joel Myers, Brian Baldinger, Jim Knox. And we couldn't ask for a better day to be in the heartland. Oh, this is what they draw them up right now. I mean, this is not a cloud in the sky. Mid-70s. 
You feel like the onset of fall just kind of creeping in here a little bit, maybe another week. Uh, it's football season. Impressive drive, Baldy, for the Jayhawks, but they couldn't capitalize once they got to the red zone. Well, you got to finish those drives, you know, and I'm sure that's what upsets Charlie Weiss right now is their inability to finish. But I thought that Rice made a number of good defensive stops and they tackled well on that drive. They didn't give up the big play or the scoring play. Nick Romago, sidewinder, not as deep this time, and is going to be picked up by Dante Moore at the goal line. Moore puts it on the ground, loose, and the Jayhawks should have it. A lot of blue jerseys, and they do. Two kickoff returns in this game, two fumbles. One by Rice, Dante Moore laying it on the ground, and of course, uh, the Owls did it, as, uh, Kansas did it as well. But that's so costly to give Kansas the ball right back. Let's see what happened on the return. Yeah, I mean, I think he just fumbled that himself. I mean, he looked very unsure of himself running it now. And he did. He bounced it right off his left knee. Nobody caused that fumble. I don't know if I've seen that before. Well, the wide receiver is down. He was making a stop. Josh Ford was a big special teams guy for them last week with a block punt. So Chris to the offense, right back on the field. They've got it to the 18. Now a little fade action and a push off by the wide receiver on that side. It was Bashir's with his left hand out. It's incomplete. You know, Bashir's has great speed. I mean, he was the one that fumbled for Kansas on the kickoff, but that is that's an NFL type play. You get the turnover deep in the territory, you go for the shot right away. You go for the touchdown throw. And Chris just missed the Bashirs, who, you know, at 5'9", it's tough. It's a small little window to squeeze that ball in on that throw. Chris now 5 of 8 for 37 yards to start the game. He's a senior. Played in Notre Dame High School in Sherman Oaks in San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles. Ball start on the offense. Number 70. It's a 5-yard penalty. It'll remain second down. It's Gavin Howard, a first-year starter. He's a junior at the right tackle spot. I mean, it's just a question of poise. And, uh, you know, the second start here in a two-point stance, getting ready for a pass, he's got to hold it a little bit better. Plenty of time for Chris. Wide open over the middle. Touchdown, Jayhawks. It's the tight end, Jim A. Mundine. I want to say there was a blown coverage on the play, but it looked like it was man-to-man, -man and Mundine just got behind him. And Dane Chris showed a lot of poise on that play because that wasn't his first target. The Rice Owls like to play three safeties on defense, try and take those kind of plays away, but there was a breakdown in that coverage. Doherty in for the point after. Man, the Jayhawks on a 23-yard touchdown pass to Mundine. Take advantage of the mistake. It all started on the kickoff return. And Dante Moore putting it on the ground. Well, Dante Moore, he fumbled it off his own left leg here. Very uncertain. And that ball was loose. It's recovered. And then two plays later, they get to the tight end, Jimmy Mundine. Plenty, uh, plenty of protection there for Crest. Nobody in the open field. And... On that play, looked like they beat Malcolm Hill, who's one of those three safeties I was talking about. So you had to play a clean game. You had to protect your quarterback. Specials had to be on top of the situation. But now another mistake, and that's four turnovers combined between these two teams over the first nine and a half minutes of the game. Well, Rice can't go on the road. They can't go on the road and and beat a Big 12 team, turning it over twice in the first quarter. I mean, they're just making it awfully tough on themselves. So two turnovers by each team. Perlago will kick it away. So you saw it. Ten points over the last 18 seconds. And it goes right to the same guy. It's going to be Dante Moore, and he puts it on the ground again. He does a good job to get it out to the 20-yard line. He so that's a little nervous after that first fumble. That's where Rice will start with the time for Mazda game break as we head back to Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen.
Joe, we check in on number one, Alabama, taking on Western Kentucky. A.G. McCarron goes upstairs to Kevin Norwood, 33 yards. They look like number one. Nice job by McCarron. Held in there long enough. He knew he was going to get hit, delivered the ball in proper place. Look but really they good. look like number one, Marcus. Nice job by McCarron. <laughs> we'll figure out who he thinks is the number one team in the nation. What about you, Brian? Who's number one, USC or Alabama? I don't know who's number one right now, but I know Marcus would like to run behind that Alabama offensive line. They look like an NFL <laughs> offensive line. I'd say the Crimson Tide right now, early in this year. From the 21. They're working out of an interesting formation in the option toss. It's Charles Watts. It is a laceration on his leg, and it was cut by a helmet of the opposition last week that put him out of commission. He was questionable, but got back in time, and he's dropped by Tunde Bakare. Well, you know, I think Rice's deepest position is running back. You see on the uh, the right calf, he's got a little bit of a, uh, a bandage there, kind of covering things up. But they've got three really good backs, and they use them all. <laughs> Ran into the short side of the field. Now second and eight. Going the other way, Ross breaks tackles, and he's got to close down. Let's head downstairs to Jim Knox. Jim? Joel, I did talk to Charles Ross before the game, and he said, yeah, 20 stitches in that right leg. You see that black sleeve over his knee. He said that's not going to affect his running style at all today. And on that last play, he was exactly right. First and 10 at the 34. Talented young man. Man. It's Ross again as it goes out to about the 34. No gain on that one. You got 20 stitches in your knee and you're back out in the field. Tough. <laughs> it's, it's Texas tough. I mean, he's just trying to get that wound to heal. I don't know if he can heal it. The stitches are still in there. Well, he's from Texas, so it makes sense. That's a good strike. McCarr finds his wide out on that side. And it's complete to Taylor for the first down, the sophomore from Denison. You can see Rice here is trying to pick it up. Right now, the card looks left. That's a nice little read there. Nice little read. Get the ball out of his hands quickly to Taylor. So back to back first downs from their own 21. And the pocket again on the crossing pattern. His favorite target early. You can tell he's looking for 15, Jordan Taylor. And I was talking to Dave Campo, the new defensive coordinator here for Kansas. Of course, longtime defensive coordinator in the NFL. And he said, this is a very difficult offense to defend. You get the running game, you get the option, and then you get the quick passing game like it is right here. That's a bubble on the outside. Yeah, complete. it's complete to McGuffey, who had eight grabs last week. And anytime he gets it, you worry, because he's a former tailback. Well, you know, and they run a lot of jet screens with him. And when the ball's in his hands like it just was, he reacts and responds like a running back. His eyes go immediately to beat the defender. There's Tempo now. Yeah, it's a keep for McCarr with a flag on a hold on the outside. Boy, Dante Moore can't get out of his own way right now. You're right. And that's who they're going to call it on, Joel. The wide receiver. Holding on the offense, number 81. The 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay, first down. Well, that, that fake had me, Joel. I, mean, I was looking <laughs> for the backup here. And that was an excellent. You can see Kansas was juked out as well. Tobin of Purim totally went for it. And then there's. The hold right in the middle, and that was flagrant. You know, I mean, it's that's that's a costly penalty, just like the costly turnovers that Rice have committed. A lot of time to make up for the junior from Manor, Texas, Dante Moore. It's second and nine. This time he gives it off to Peterson. It doesn't work, and, and Peterson normally is the guy they use as the wild owl because he's a former high school quarterback. Well, this and this play right now, they got good penetration inside. Jordan Tavai right there, a young defensive tackle, junior college transfer. That's one thing that Charlie Weiss did. He recruited a lot of junior college kids to come in and play right away. Turner Gill, the former head coach here, did recruit a junior college transfer in two years. It's worked okay for Bill Snyder, hasn't it? Sure, sure has. Third and nine. Middle of the field's available. And complete for the first down to Big Vance McDonald at 6'5", 260. I like these two tight ends. Luke Wilson and Vance McDonald. They're, they're big targets. They, they have good hands. They find the dead spot in the zone. Here he is, just kind of come in and just clear. Just sit down what you call a little stick route. And then 
because he's 6'5 and he's got a little bit of bulk to him, you know, he's able to lunge forward for the first down and overcome that mistake by Dante Moore. So they convert on third down. Huge play for the odds. Trailing early by seven. Big Hart has pressure. He's got it battled away from behind. O'Pullum got it. Who recovers it? It looks like it may have squirted back to the Jayhawks. Tobin O'Pullum, he took it away. What a play. The former running back. <laughs> Well, he's the captain, and he's the playmaker, and he's the rush end, and that's exactly what he does on this play. Here he is on the outside, and this is really on the quarterback, because the protection really wasn't bad by John Huddy on the outside. But McCarg, I thought, held the ball too long, especially on a first down. Not bad protection, but nice job of going for the arm and the strip by a forum. He almost got the entire trifecta of the sack, the fumble, and the recovery. It'll be first down. And nothing doing for Taylor Cox, a junior out of junior college tra transfer from Mill Creek, Washington. Nawasu, who's coming off a huge game last week with nine stops and three batted down extra points. Although all three were low line drives from the UCLA kicker. Yeah, but nonetheless, right. three block kicks. And also, they call him the pocket rocket. You know, he's 5'10, but he's 235 pounds, and he packs a wall up and. Nice stop to the hole on that play. Trying to make his own hole. It's once again Cox. So Pearson started the game. Taylor Cox comes on. Shaheen in on the stop. There's a nice connection. The junior from Richmond, British Columbia, making the stop there. Well, two Canadians right yep. there in the middle of the defensive line, Covington and Shaheen. Of course, one of their coaches coached in the CFL. And you know, kind of grew some roots up there north of the border, and they've gotten a lot of their kids back here in Houston as a result. Chris looking for the first down, the final minute of the first quarter. And why do they intend to target Patterson? It was well short of where he needed to go anyway. Didn't look really where the marker was. Yeah, you know, and I tell you, I thought that was a good job of changing things up on the defense there by Rice. They only rushed three, they dropped eight in the coverage, and they played coverage. And uh, Chris just wasn't accurate enough to put that ball in the right spot. So an excellent stop by Rice after another turnover. First punt of the game. We've had that many turnovers. This is the first punt for Doherty. He had a big day, averaging better than 46. A try last week of their opener. McGuffey waits. And downwind, Doherty gets into it. McGuffey inside his own 10. Won't be able to turn the corner. Great special teams work by the Jayhawks. Prince Candy was down there and also down there for the wide receiver. 50 yard punt. Well, the best thing is McGuffey has to go sideways. As soon as he has to go sideways, now here comes Prince Candy to make the stop. And that's exactly what you want to do flatten that returner to the sidelines. Next Saturday, be with us once again. Great day of college football. Starting right here on FSN, as we're going to be in Stillwater, Oklahoma, the 18th ranked Cowboys taking on Louisiana Lafayette. Then AM is going to battle SMU. It's followed by North Texas. They're going to try to upset 21st ranked Kansas State. And by next week, after what K State's been doing to Miami today, they could be inside the top 20. FX doubleheader, TCU taking on Kansas, Portland State battling Washington. Just a few games right here on Fox. Another bubble action. And that should be the final snap as he's complete on the outside. Taken in by Gotro, a junior from Friendswood, Texas. And will that be the final snap? More tempo that last drive and a successful drive for the Rice Alsa. We'll see if they continue to pick up the pace in the second 15 minutes of play because it definitely worked on that last possession before the takeaway. So that's the end of the first quarter here in Lawrence, Kansas. Jayhawks looking for their second straight win after winning only two games all of last season. And they're up early by seven. My name's Sloan, and my all-time favorite is the patty mill. Start out with two quarter-pound patties, some grilled onions. Make sure they get all nice and caramelized. They melt the cheese on there. Monterey Jack cheese. My favorite part is when it starts getting all melted and everything. Texas toast, creamy pepper sauce. That sauce is good on anything. 
grilled onions, sauce, a cheese, Texas toast. That's it right there. Mm. And it's just so good. <laughs> the patty melt. You're making me hungry, man. Y'all need to stop. There are more than 4,000 student athletes in the Big 12 Conference. On the field, the competition among these athletes is as fierce as ever. Off the field, we found that they can work together. Sure, there are rivalries, but when we asked them to create the best conference in college athletics, they all stood up and cheered. So, block by block, piece by piece, athletically and academically, the Big 12 Conference has never been stronger. Because in the Big 12, it's always game day. Welcome back to the start of the second quarter in Lawrence, Kansas. Coors Light game summary. You look at the numbers. Five turnovers in the first 15 minutes. And that, that's really the story right now, Joel, is, you know, both teams have been guilty of turning it over. Now, I'd say this. The defenses have risen up and responded. The only touchdown off of those turnovers right now is Jamey Mundine with the touchdown catch coming from the quarterback, Dane Christ, for Kansas. The Rice was in a much bigger hole last week. They were down 19 yeah. to nothing to UCLA and scored 17 unanswered. Let's see how they respond. Second and seven. Option wide side of the field. The car taken out by the linebacker, floating over. And it's Tharp. Holden Tharp. That's a great name for a backer. It is a great name. <laughs> and it was a great hit. You know, I mean, he really put the wood to Taylor McCart, who's shown me a lot of toughness in the shots he's already taken here this afternoon. So now field position-wise, a very big third down both ways. He needs to put a little tint on that visor he wears over his helmet with the sun out there today. Timeout, Kansas. So it came late. Dave Campo with the defensive coordinator. He wanted that. See what the Owls do on third down when we come back. Five seasons at Notre Dame for Charlie Wise. And after spending time with him yesterday, and also Dave Campo, you can tell how much both of them are invigorated by being on a college campus again. They, they both like the NFL and the college game equally as well. But you know, Charlie said, look, I can really impact these young kids' lives early in their lives. And he enjoys that aspect. It's a third and three out of the break for Rice. Coming back on it and picking up the first down. McCard with a dart. Maddie finds his wide receiver on that side. Gip, yes, Gibbon took it in, the redshirt freshman. Yeah, and, and really, you said it, Joel. I mean, he's going to come back to the ball right now. And that's the key. Never gave the, the corner on that side, Tyler Patton, a chance to, to react to it. That given Cedar Hill, Texas, and a first down to the 18. That was huge. Otherwise, Kansas getting the ball back at about midfield. Little counter action. And nifty moves on the outside. Good run. The best so far for Charles Ross. Well, that combined a lot of things on that run because he was patient. Then he showed a burst. Then a little bit of a hop, almost like a triple jump hop, and uh, made a guy miss and was able to pick up the first down. I think the pirouette action of, of McCard really kind of slowed the defense down as well. A bunch formation here to the left as they look over from the sideline for the ball. First down from the 30. It's gonna be Ross. Slams his way off left tackle. Out past the 34. Augustino, a junior from Katie, one of the underneath tackles making the stop over there. They ran it well against UCLA after the big early deficit. They got their legs under him. McCarg, and most of McCarg's runs were on scrambles, his 95 yards. Well, he, know, he had looked very well. You know, I went back and watched him. You know, he started the first four games last year, and then David Bailiff, the head coach, said he kind of fizzled a little bit, and he lost his job, but he came back, he competed, he won the job this year, and here he is, you know, in the second start of the season. They called it a mid-season meltdown. Taking a long time to get there, isn't it? Yeah, run out of bounds is Charles Ross. Short of the first down by about two. It almost looked slow motion. Well, it was about a 35-yard run to gain two <laughs> yards. <laughs> you know, they strung it out real well. What, what they said about McHarg, he, he came back in spring a changed man. Yeah. And he was a leader all of a sudden. So he got the message when he had the meltdown, and they sat him down. Third and three. Peterson was taken over in the backfield. 
They just converted a third and three. Option wide side and, and Turner Peterson. And the, the back came up and almost took it out of the air. If Bakari was looking <laughs> for it, it was there for the take. It was dangerous, Joel. <laughs> you're out there on the edge now and you're playing on the edge. And that's really the key to the option game is hold that ball to the very last second and force that defender to you. And then you flip it and you kind of hold your breath there for a little bit. Tunde Bakari was between <laughs> the running back and the quarterback and it sailed right by. Yeah. That was a nice pitch by McCarr, get a good finish. Peterson stays in after picking up the first down. Now trying to scramble to pick up some yards, McCarr makes the most out of a scramble situation for about three. But see, that he gained 95 yards rushing last week against UCLA, and a lot of it were scrambles like that, not designed runs. You know, so he has that that added dimension where he can go get you three yards on a play that didn't look like it was going to gain any. And, and in talking with Dave Campo, that worried him the most. Yeah. Well, it, you know, it's always a thorn. You know, who's going to handle the quarterback? You know, it's got to be a team thing. All eyes have to, to stay on number 16 for Rice. And the tight ends available. Vance McDonald, boy, picking up. How about Turner Peterson picking up the pressure for his quarterback? Well, that time, Kansas blitz. They came off the edge, and McDougal, McDonald just replaced it. I mean, here they come off the edge, and here he comes. Head's going to be over from the other side. Good read, Peterson. Yeah. Came across, helped out McCarr big time. First down, Rice, and they are rolling on a drive that started back at their own six. But you see now, see how they're, they're slowing it down here? They're, they're no huddle. They're looking to the sidelines, and they're changing the pace. You know, they go quick, they slow it down. You know, so they're keeping the tempo in their favor. From the 38, out in the flat, the tailback. Man, it's Peterson. He's got another first down. And, and Brian, is it more just to make sure Kansas can't change personnel? Well, they just did that time. They, they just put a brand new, they just did a hockey change. The, the four new defensive linemen just came in to try to stay fresh to get more pressure on McCarr. So down to the 24. What an impressive drive for McCarg on those two back-to-back -back third and three conversions deep in his own territory. Peterson. Boy, power over to the left side. He's into the secondary with a first down and a first to goal inside the 10. He had a convoy. He did. And they moved the line of scrimmage that time. Really great job this time of... Watch this movement right here. You get the guard in the center out here on that play right now. Nate Richards is out there leading the way. And you really did. You got a combo. You got a lot of bodies there and moving the blue shirts and creating a huge crease that time for Peterson. First and goal inside the 10. Hart getting the play from the sideline. Can we finish the drive? With a touchdown. Fade to the corner and a lot of contact as it goes incomplete. He was working against Patman, all locked up over there. It was Dennis Parks. Well, here's Patman. He does a great job of using his body and squeezing him to the sideline. Now, as long as he turns back for the ball, he turns his head back for the ball, there should be no interference yeah. on that play. But if there's contact, you saw the ball out of the hands of the quarterback, and there's still contact before he turns around. If you contact and you turn and you look for the ball, Joe, by definition, that should not be interference. That's the first incompletion after nine straight. But he had hit McCarr, gives it off. It's Peterson, who's been the workhorse on the last few snaps of this drive. He took over after they passed the midfield stripe for Charles Ross. So pretty nice tandem working right now to the backfield for the Owls. Uh, it's the second time they've been down in this part of the field now. First time they set up for a field goal. We would have thought the opposite. That graphic, rushing yards. We would have thought Kansas sure. basically almost two to one. So third and goal. Time for McCarr, up for grabs, and it's deflected away. It's knocked away by Heaney. Otherwise, I think it's intercepted. Flag on the play. Flag came out right away in the end zone to the three receiver side.
While the ball was in the air and eligible receiver, we have a hold on number 18. That's half the distance from the previous spot, and it's an automatic first down. That's Corgan Powell, the nickelback. So a huge blow and a pick me up at the same time for Rice. Well, what it does, it gives them an automatic first down here, Joel. First down at the four. So on third down, they look like they're getting off the field and forcing Rice into a field goal situation. And now a fresh set of downs. And you can see, you know, you got a three by two set here. Run the quarterback. Five receivers would be a good call here, Joel. Spread them out. Big hard wants to throw, though. Middle, no. Goes in the corner instead. <laughs> and in the middle of the field, it was wide open for Luke Wilson. Yeah, it was open for Luke Wilson, the big tight end. It was open for Lavette Gibson. The wide receiver. Did he make up his mind where he wanted to go too soon? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, he had pressure coming. He could feel the pressure coming from his backside, Joel. It forced him to look to the right. And I think that's why he couldn't see Wilson. Now, second and goal outside of the three. See this guy right here, Vance McDonald. This guy has 13 clear touchdown passes, a lot of them in this part of the field. Run the option. Wide side pick. Peterson won't get there. Drop from behind as the linebacker, Bakari, got on his back. A nice job here by, on the outside, McDonald getting a good block, a little bit of softness there, pretty good run. And really, if I'm calling the plays right now, I'm thinking I've got two downs to score. You know, I'm not going for it on fourth down. It's all, I'm already made up my mind that I'm going for it on fourth down if I can't make the third. 16 player to drive, it started back to the right six. Ball control for the Rice House on the road. So they tie it up on third and goal. Peterson should get there. He does. Touchdown. Very nice. similar to the play they yeah. used to the footwork of the quarterback. Might have thrown him off again. So okay. Peterson with the touchdown. Watch, watch uh, the right tackle here. Caleb Williams coming around, number 74, along with Nate Richards. The center pulls. Got a couple extra bodies there, and that was a nice job by both Peterson and Ross of controlling the clock, keeping Kansas off the field. So the former high school quarterback out of Oklahoma City, Turner Peters, with the touchdown run. Now in for the point after, it's Chris Boswell. And very quiet Ooh. as it hits the upright. And squirts through. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's a, hey, that's a member's bounce. <laughs> <And> member's <laughs> there bounce. is no yes. question. <laughs> it's a road game. Only a country clubber would come up with a, a member's with bounce, bounce for Boswell. And we're all even in Lawrence. Fox College Football presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. Also by Ford, it's the Built Top Truck event at your Texas Ford dealer. Ford, the best in Texas. And on your way home, make a late night foodie call at Jack in the Box. Joel Myers, Brian Baldinger, and Jim Knox as we welcome you back to Lawrence, Kansas. Good one going right now. And who would have believed it? Seven, almost seven and a half minutes that drive for the Rice Owls. And they've got some big playmakers, but that time they just ground it out. Well, it was ball control, and they sustained the offense for 16 plays because they converted the third down. And so they stayed on the field, they played keep away. And then, look, David Bailiff was very honest with us this week for Rice. He said, we're a better football team than what we showed last week against UCLA. We, we didn't get beat by physicality. We didn't get beat by scheme. You know, we had to work on our tackling. They have. They've tackled better today. We, they'd be in a much better situation today if they did a, if they could hold on to the football. Three turnovers. Five combined. Two from the Kansas Jayhawks. Boswell will kick it away. And the low line drive is right through the end zone. Wow. Taking the return game of Bashir is right out of it. Mazda game break time. Let's check in once again with Kevin Fraser and Marcus Allen. Guys. Joel, USC off to a sluggish start against Syracuse. Finally, they get in the end zone. Marquise Lee. Yes, it was a receiving touchdown. It was the running game that got them down there, Kevin. That's what they have to remember. Run the ball first, then throw. Marcus, that's number two. USC being watched by Mark Sanchez. Back to you guys, Joel and Brian. All right. I don't think Marcus is upset that USC dropped one spot after that performance by Alabama last week. Marquise Lee scored on the first play against Hawaii last week in 75 yards. Pearson pop crossing the 25, spun around down to the 27. So Tony Pearson, the speed 
He was one of the top running backs coming out of the St. Louis area three years ago. Shaheen puts him down. Well, look, when Charlie inherited this program this offseason from Turner Gill, I mean, he was looking to where was the talent. And uh, immediately, Tony Pearson and his speed kind of caught his eye. And so he made him the featured back. And then they went out and got Taylor Cox out of the junior college and kind of solidified that running back position. And with the return of Sims, a couple of weeks down the road, the handoff, and a stop the road with a big hole. Pearson gets it. But Chris was stumbling over his own two feet and <laughs> lunged to get it into the breadbasket. And I tell you, there was quick penetration by Rice on this play, but you can see Pearson, <laughs> he did. The old turf monster got him. Look at this burst here. This is, Tony Pearson sees that hole now. That burst, it catches your eye. And uh, in, a, in, a, in just a, a flash bulb of a second, 10 yards he gains. From the 37, Chris with time. Man, the block for the tied end. It's Mike Ragone, another transfer from Notre Dame for Charlie Wise, a senior from Panera You know pretty well, Blackwood, New Jersey. Oh, man, he went to high school right down the road from where I live at Camden Catholic. Another, you know, Notre Dame graduate, had some eligibility left. Came here with, uh, with Chris, kind of a Notre Dame package deal, heavy Notre Dame connection on this team at Kansas. And so, you know, Chris has a uh, receiver that he's very, very familiar with. It'll be second in the yard. And Pearson bolts up the middle. Look out. Touchdown saving tackle to the secondary by Julius White. It kind of takes your breath away. I mean, it is, there is such a burst from this kid. And the times we see it right now, we're in traffic. A very, very patient here now. There it is. Whew. Rice is doing a good job here of getting him off his feet. Those safeties better collapse quickly. Otherwise, it's going to be a shot right to the goal line. It'll be Pearson again. And breaking the initial tackle. He's got good yards, five, almost six. And when Charlie Wise looked at us yesterday with a smile on his face, he goes, guys, he goes, number three, watch it. Number three is really, really fast. We believe him. Well, and I, we're seeing that. We're, we're seeing it kind of break here right now. I mean, there's not a whole lot to him. You know, he's got to jump around the shower just to get wet. But, but, uh, but man, can he pick him up and put him down? Slide smiling. The tight end. Trent smiling. Nice guy. And, uh, did the wall ever open up that right side because he wasn't touched until he was five years old. So 15's got to leave the field, Philip Gaines, and that's a new rule in college football. If you lose your helmet, you're out for a snap. Well, it's all about player safety. And so if the helmet isn't forced off, it just comes off like it did in the field of play, probably because it wasn't buckled on both sides tightly, then you got to remove yourself for one play. I think everybody in college football kind of agrees that it's a good rule. Taylor Cox takes over in the backfield. Simple yeah. handoff up the middle. Making a mess. Does he get there? No. Stopped from behind by Paul Porras. Well, right up the middle behind Zlatnik and Marin Jelly is Taylor Cox. We said it's a two-headed monster. Nice little trap that time. Set by the tight end Trent Smiley, and that hole opened up, and Cox hits that almost as quickly as Pearson does. Two 100-yard rushers last week, and, and two over 120 yards for the first time since the late 90s for the Kansas Jayhawks. Impressive. Right, it is. And this drive is, is all, on the, all on the ground. First and goal for the four. Flag from the back, Judge. Offense, number 10. It's a five-yard penalty. It'll remain first down. Well, they've had a little more than two minutes, and you talk about a ground game being effective. This drive started back at the Kansas 25, don't forget. Well, it's been exactly what we said at the very start of this uh, broadcast today, Joel, that Charlie was going to feature the running game here with these two backs, Pearson and Cox, and on this drive, it's kind of what we thought it would be. Could Rice contain these two explosive backs? And guys that I think are a good tandem, they, they play off each other real well. And they play behind a good experienced offense line as they try to go hurry up here. Take it back to the nine on the play fake. Looking into the corner. Back the other way. He's got a man wide open. Low throw. Won't get there. So it was not his primary kill pick. He wanted to go the other way to the tight end coming across or make it a midgey. 
coming he wanted, across. He wanted to go to Amici, but I don't know if he knew that he was getting the ball. He was running what you call a post corner route. And I just, it just seemed like, uh, you know, he didn't have any urgency on it. The kick was available with space. Now it's going to be second and goal to the nine. How do they do in the red zone after this long drive? Plenty of time for Crest underneath back in the flat won't get there but he's down to the one Brandon Bourbon spun like a helicopter the sophomore from Potosi Missouri. Yeah that's uh, that's Brandon Bourbon here he is this is what you call just a Texas route just coming out of the outside and then curling back in kind of an angle route right there in the old West Coast offense they just called that 23 Texas here he comes and I was going to angle inside here. And they clear it out. Mundine clears it out. He comes underneath. But a great hit by Rice saved the touchdown. We'll see what the Jayhawks do when we come back. And coming up, Kevin Frazier, Marcus Allen. They'll get us ready for halftime as well, right after these messages. Coming up at the half. Look at that, Matt Barkley holding up the number two sign, the USC Trojans, <laughs> playing That's right now. That's a victory sign. They're but still our, number one in my book. I don't know about well, yours. We'll figure out who is the number one <laughs> team in the nation. Looks like he's saying we're number two. Back to you, Joel. <laughs> All right, we like the argument, though. Yes, Keep it, it up, guys. It's early. <laughs> it's early. But we have fun debating week to week. Out of the timeout, it is a third and goal for the Jayhawks. Timeout taken by David Bale. Bale the rise out. They got a linebacker, fullback in there, Skyler Miles, who could be the lead back for Pierce. And it's going to be Miles. Is he in? Yes, they gave it to the true freshman from Tampa. Touchdown, Jayhawks. Just a quick dive. Use Pierce it is. I mean, just a quick dive right up the middle. Use Pearson as kind of a decoy. Two guys went with Pearson, kind of softened things up in the middle. Sometimes that one yard is the hardest yard there is to gain, but that time Miles did a good job of just falling right behind Marin Jelly and Sterling. Doherty for the point after. Man, the lead once again for the Jayhawks at Memorial Stadium. 332 to play in the half. So after a long drive, 94 yarder, took 16 plays. Turner Peterson with the score for the Rice Owls. Well, the Jayhawks came right back with an answer of their own. They traveled 75 yards, almost all of them on the ground. The finishing yard, Skyler Miles, a linebacker, and a Jayhawk. Back in Lawrence, Kansas, where the Jayhawks lead the Owls 17 10. Watch what a good influence does by running back. Watch Trey Briggs, the linebacker here, go with the running back when he takes off. He completely removes himself from the play. I mean, he's the middle linebacker on that play, right? But that's Pearson. That's speed. That's what that does. It influences you, pulls you right out of the equation and open up uh, the middle of that field for Skylar Miles to score his first touchdown of the year. Keep you honest. Keep you honest. Something, you know, <laughs> something, you know, you've got to learn about doing it. I'm looking at you when I said that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was looking at you. 332 to play in the half. Listen to the things that come out of your mouth. Learn how to stay The lago. The walk-on with a high one and a very short one. It'll be Sam McGuffey from the 13. The running back weaving his way. He's a wide receiver now, but he had a lot of touches as a running back two years ago. Jim Knox, what's going on? Joel, you got to like that performance by the Kansas offensive line, getting a well-deserved break right behind me. Spencer and company opening up some huge holes. Also, you remember Brandon Bur Bourbon, who really got it down to the goal line, took that hard helicopter hit. He's walking around on the sidelines right now, guys. They were looking at his right knee. I think he's going to be good to go, though. All right, thank you, Jim. Rice has 326 remaining in the half. They've also got two timeouts on the board. Charles Ross back at the game after Peterson did most of the work the last part of that last drive. It's a little jet action though for the wide receiver. And trying to bounce outside. Not much available as it's a long run for McGuffey. They need to give him some touches. Give him about seven after all is said and done. And how about long drives? Well, I mean, you look at uh, what Rice has done. You know, I mean, they're really playing ball control. Neither defense can take it away right now. But that's good execution by both both offenses, I think, more than poor defense at this point. 
for Rice. He saw 23 snaps his last two drives, all those yards. Still down by seven. Nick Hart, shortstop. And it's Jordan Taylor for a first down. I like the command that McCarg has right now. I mean, really, he's getting the ball out of his hands quickly. I think he's uh, a little bit more accurate with the ball right now in the short passing game than he was he, a week ago. And he's got good wheels. He, he ran track in high school. He was on a on a district title team. He ran a, a leg of the four by 200 meters, so he can move. That's the threat that Campo worries about, the defensive coordinator of the Jayhawks. First down for the 44. Looking for the bubble, making a mess. Good job by McGuffey. Seven, almost eight. He's a senior from Cypress, Texas. See, that time, Prince Candy, a little, they're trying to change things up in the secondary, but Prince Candy was the outside linebacker, and he tried to buzz out to make that play, and he wasn't able to get McGuffey down. A good read, good throw, good uh, run after the catch by McGuffey. Rice has to be encouraged by the way they're mixing things up and moving the ball regularly on this third consecutive drive. Knee three. Man, isolation to the outside. That had to be a clean tackle for Patman because they're coming off the edge there. Well, what I'm impressed about by the quarterback is how quickly he gets rid of the football. I mean, it's like a, it's like Derek Jeter turning a double play. I mean, he's just taking the snap right now from Richards, and as quickly as he can catch it, he's getting it out of his hands. From the 45 first down, and Jordan Taylor left uncovered. Lubbock Smith, the safety came over, but the corner had dropped way off the line of scrimmage. Patman. Oh, yeah, I mean, this is what you're talking about. I mean, this is just... Just a quick stop route right now. You know, it beats Lubbock Smith to safety to the sidelines. And so, I mean, they're going to take that. They're giving it to him again. See if he takes it again as the corner plays off. Big push. Almost 10 yards off the line of scrimmage. That's what we're talking about. Right on the outside. Ross, huge hole up the middle. Inside the 15. And an ankle tackle. Otherwise, he's in the end zone. McDougal saved it. The free safety. Well, he was right up the middle. Just a little fold block that time between Richards and Ian Gray, the left guard, and Ross ran right behind him. So first and ten from the 12th. Drive started back to the Rice 27. Minute 25 and counting. Left in the half. Good pocket protection. And good right to the linebacker, Heaney. Boy, Haney made his first start last week for the Kansas Jayhawks, and he almost had his first interception of the season in his second start because he made the right read. Stepped right in front of the ball. He just didn't come up with it. Second and ten from the 12. Kansas is throwing a lot of junk right here from a look standpoint who they might bring in a blitz situation if they throw it. Pistol formation with the back behind the car. He comes, corner of the end zone, and they got the all turned around, wanted to flag. He won't get it. It'll be a third down. He's working against McDougal. That's a good battle. McDougal is a guy that has, you know, great coverage ability. He's got good size. You know, this is, I mean, he has a chance to play on Sunday. I know there's some scouts from the Falcons here today looking at him. Uh, that's good coverage all the way around. Got his body on him, can run well. Plus, you know, he's 6'1", 210 pounds back there at safety. He had two interceptions in their opener last week, a former wide receiver who made the transition two years ago. Timeout. So they'll set it up with a minute 13 to play and still Rice with another timeout. timeout. On the board. So another strong drive from McCard and the Rice Owls offensively. Delta Night College football comes back to Fox. Aaron Andrews, Eddie George, Joey Harrington get it ready for the kickoff. It'll be the Ford Fox College Saturday pregame show. Then Burkett and the number 16 Cornhuskers heading to Los Angeles. It's a test against the UCLA Bruins with the Rose Bowl. Bruins trying to pull off the upset. It's our coverage of Fox College football, and it starts tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 
out of the West Coast. And what a setting. Oh, Rose, man. Bowl Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Bowl. Jim Moore in his second game trying to revive that uh, UCLA Bruin program. The Black Shirts of Nebraska. And UCLA did a good job Coming in the second down. half defensively against a Rice team that moved the ball on them last Saturday in the first half. Yeah, they shut him down in the second half, made a few adjustments, and really stopped uh, the option. Now, third and ten from the 12. It'll be a quarterback draw all the way. McCarg making a miss initially. What a call. Down inside the seventh. You know <laughs> what? It just down by Haney. It, you know what? It just didn't open up. The, the two defensive tackles of Kansas kind of rushed straight ahead. They didn't pass rush and go outside. So fourth down, they go for it right now. Kansas trying to get the right people on the field. They've got plenty of time to make your decision. They look back over to the bench. Another timeout on the board, and still 16 in the play clock. Anybody want to jump? If I wanted to find that's out. what they might be trying to do here. And another timeout coming for the Rice Owls. I don't know. I don't think that you can go for them. I mean, I, I, I put the field goal kicker out right here, Joel. I'd take short points. So decision coming up for the Rice Owls. And we look ahead to halftime as we send it back to Kevin Frazier, Marcus Allen in our college football studio. Coming up in moments, we're going to figure out who is really the number one team in the nation. You notice Marcus can't take his eyes off of USC. So focused on the Trojans, but right now they are number two in the land. Also, we'll head to the School of Learning, and we'll get you set for Nebraska and UCLA. Is this a new era for the Bruins? It's all coming up at the half. Joel? All right, Kevin. Boy, that needle is getting longer and longer. Isn't it from Kevin Frazier? He's poking Marcus him. Allen. He's poking him. It'll be a field goal attempt coming up, a 29-yarder, and... Boswell, that's a chip shot for him. Sand wedge, L wedge, he got it. With 21 seconds left, it's a four-point ball game. It was the right decision, though. I mean, you look, there's a lot of football to be played. It's a good two back-to-back -back drives here by Rice. Really controlling the football right now, keeping Charlie's offense off of the field. And so, look, a couple, three, no, three turnovers in the first quarter, and they're only down four here, you know, with less than a minute to go now in this uh, this first half. So I thought Rice did a good job of getting back into this game, making it competitive right now. They know they can move the ball against them. It's the right choice putting Boswell out there and kicking the field goal. So after all those possessions and all those turnovers in the first 15 minutes of play, <laughs> and we had five turnovers in the first 15, three from Rice, two from Kansas, it has certainly settled down to the point where Kansas has had the ball just once in the second quarter, twice for Rice. Yeah. Well, that's what ball control can do. And you only have ball control is if you can convert your third downs. And that's what Rice has done a good job of. You'd like to, you'd like to be able to get a touchdown when you get down there. Twice now they've been down there and they've come away with field goals and not touchdowns. And I'm sure that part of the field's offense will be addressed on the blackboard at halftime. Boswell out of Keller, Texas. Gets into it pretty well, right out of the end zone. So with 21 seconds left, it's going to be at the 25 for Kansas. You got to believe with a lead, they're not going to gamble with only one timeout left. You know, the on smart the board. football says go out there, you know, Dane Christ, and take a knee. And let's go regroup. Let's take the lead. And uh, let's talk, you know, they get the ball to start the third quarter because they had won the toss and they deferred. So that'd be the smart football play right now. They surprised us to start the game. Let's face it, though. We thought they'd be basic and they tried a gadget and it blew up on us. It did. <laughs> From the 25, they actually have two timeouts for in case they decide to try to do something. Taylor Cox wedges it out across the 30, out to the 31. And that should do it. So they will go to the locker room in a four-point ball game. The first time that Rice has ever made a trip to Lawrence, Kansas. They've only met one time before, and that was John Hayda was playing here in 1961 in the Blue Bonnet Bowl. Let's head to Jim Knox. Knox. All right, thanks, Coach. Uh, right now heading into halftime with a four-point lead, doing most of the damage in the first half on the ground. How pleased are you with your offense right now? Well, we had to do that, you know, because, you know, Rice has done a good job moving the ball themselves. It was That was big for us to be able to hold on to the ball and take, make a nice long drive to get down there because we you know, we got pretty worn out there on defense. All right, defensive-wise, Rice right now over 100 yards on the ground. How do you stop in the second half? Well, I mean, 
you pick your poison. If you load it up in front, you know, they, they throw, they've been spreading the field and throwing pretty effectively. I think we just got to make more plays in the run game. I appreciate the time, right, Charles. Thank you. you. Right now, halftime in Kansas, where Kansas leads Rice 17 to 13. Now we take you out to Los Angeles for a college football halftime show where we join Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen. Kevin? Welcome to Fox College Football Halftime. And, you know, Marcus, what do you think so far of Kansas under Charlie Weiss? I, I think he has a, a pretty good team. Uh, they, they look pretty good so far. They had a couple of turnovers. Uh, they played, obviously, some good defense at the end to stop uh, Rice from scoring a touchdown and head them to a field goal. But I think overall, they look pretty good on offense and defense and special teams. I think they're a much improved team since last year. All right, let's move on and let's check in with the number one team in the nation, Alabama Crimson Tide, hosting Western Kentucky. Remember, A.J. McCarron and crew dominant last week against Michigan. And how about this? First quarter, uptown, baby. A.J. to Kevin Norwood. Ever since the championship game against the LSU, he has looked fantastic. A lot of leadership and playing with a lot of confidence. 14 zip at that point. McCarron strikes again, this time 22 yards to Christian Jones. Christian Jones came over with a great catch there. Concentration juggled, kept his foot in bounds. All right, so the number one team in the nation in control, 21 0. Now we check in on number two, the USC Trojans visiting Syracuse. Mark Sanchez getting ready for Sunday, so he came to check out his boys, and um, here we go, Matt Barkley. Well, you get into the red zone, you got to look for Marquise Lee, but it was running the ball that got them down there. USC can't forget that. They should, in my opinion, run first, throw second. And the running game set up this long touchdown pass to Robert Woods in the corner. Great catch. 29-yard touchdown. No, it's a touchdown. USC up 14 to three right now. Barkley 13 of 17 for 112 yards and two touchdowns. You look at both these teams. We just saw Alabama and USC back to back, Marcus. So now we have to figure out who is the number one team in the land. Remember, Alabama beat up and dominated a Michigan team that was in the top ten last week, number eight in the nation. <laughs> USC beat a good Hawaii team at home. Hey, Kevin, I'm going to stick to my guns. I think SC is still number one. And the reason why? The eye test, Kevin. The eye test, my okay. friend. Well, please, <laughs> please, break out the Marcus Allen eye test and show me why. Playmakers abound all over the field. Marcus Lee, Woods, Silas Red, Grimble, Telfair. They have playmakers and obviously the best quarterback, I think, in college football. And they're better than defense than you think they are. They're young, they're aggressive, they're fast and they make some plays. And you know what? They improve over time. That is the key about them. A lot of people don't know, Kevin. They don't do a lot of hitting during spring ball and, and, and training camp. So they really work out their kinks early on. So they're working on things for this game, but they're going to get better as the season progresses. That's what USC does. Okay. Remember the preseason one, number one last year was Oklahoma. Kevin, I'm listening. I, 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 don't, I don't feel any pressure. You know, I'm going to stick with my pick. You stick with your pick. And Coming it's not up. a homer pick, too. I'm going to tell you that. I hope not. Okay. All right. Um, coming up, a, a tough day in the Tulsa Tulane game. We will update you on Devin Walker, the player from Tulane who was injured when we come back. Organic artichokes, organic lettuce, organic kale. Does your cauliflower have a big carbon footprint? Not at all. That's great. <laughs> Oh, yeah! Well, that was uncalled for. Uh, Mr. Gallagher? Incoming! I... <laughs> wasteful. <laughs> you know, Jimmy, the folks who save hundreds of dollars switching to Geico sure are happy. How happy, Ronnie? Happier than Gallagher at a farmer's market. Get happy. Get Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Kansas awards $50 million in scholarships and grants each year. And when you consider that $50 million bills weigh about 99,000 pounds, which is about the weight of the entire KU football team, times three and a half, the marching Jayhawks, plus instruments, and the KU cheerleaders and dance squad, you'll see that's a stadium full of money that might just have your name on it. Welcome back, and we check in on Michigan taking on Michigan State, taking on Central Michigan. Le'Veon Bell, the man, the big boy, running. And they're calling this the biggest event in Central Michigan history. 
but they get a lot of Bell. Bell into the end zone. Michigan State at that point up big 24 nothing. your score at the half as they lead the Central Michigan Chippewas. Meanwhile, number 13, Wisconsin visiting Oregon State. This one early. Monty Ball, of course, trying to get it going. A sluggish start last week. 3-0 Beavers. And then earlier today in the Tulane-Tulsa game, this sad and tragic moment. Last play of the first half, and Devin Walker, a senior for the Tulane team, injured. He's down on the field, did not move. He was eventually stabilized and taken away in an ambulance. Here is the Tulane doctor. So you guys all know Devin got hurt into the first half. Um, the Tulsa medical staff did a great job taking care of him. Full compliments to them. He's at the hospital right now. He's stable uh, and currently in traction. He did sustain a cervical spine fracture. He's got a lot of edema in his neck. Uh, he's currently in traction. He's being treated for that edema. And the plan currently is for him to have surgery in the next day or two. He's got a, they're, they're a great spine surgeon, neurosurgeons involved. That's kind of all we know at this point. Got to tell you, very scary situation. The injury, Devin Walker started a discussion on the set that we thought was worthy to continue in the Marcus Allen School of Learning. And any time you see an injury this severe, and especially when it's witnessed on television by millions, people begin to ask the question, has the game gotten too violent or too dangerous? And is it worth it, Marcus? Well, Kevin, it's a, inherently a dangerous game. We all know that. I made a decision to play the game uh, knowing the risk. Um, I wanted to realize my dream, and uh, that was important to me. Um, so I made a decision to live and not play in fear. Uh, I played the game uh, like uh, a person that was impervious to pain or getting injured. That was my mentality. That's sort of the mentality that you have to play, but it is a very violent game. Uh, you know, I had two concussions over the uh, course of my career. Mm -hmm. One was I um, uh, went to block somebody, uh, to cut somebody, and got kicked in the head. So that I consider a freak accident. And the other one was sort of a self-inflicted wound. I, I jumped over a, um, a pile of guys, did a somersault, and landed on the back of my head like a boxer would hit the canvas, you know. Um, so those are self-inflicted. I mean, I know a lot mm -hmm. of people, when we talk about concussions, um, you know, rarely have I seen really head-to-head -head contact cause that. In this situation, it was, as far as Devin Walker, it was friendly fire, unfortunately. Uh, um, I don't know if that's the right phrase, but his, his own teammate, uh, they collided. Uh, and, and those are sort of, you know, the unfortunate things. It's almost like, um, you know, it's just a freak accident. Yeah. According to the Associated Press, who talked to his brother, his mother was uh, actually watching the game back in New Orleans when she saw the injury and the family is slowly getting information, you know, and you hear the doctor say he's in traction, but there are still a lot of issues. Here's a kid who wasn't going to play pro football, was a good student, earned a scholarship as a walk-on, and, you know, he's studying cell and molecular biology, so he's a smart kid, an honor student in high school. That's when you ask... How does this impact his life? Well, Kevin, he, he, he played the game probably because he wanted to. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, uh, how do you tell somebody don't do what you want to do? I mean, if they, you know, if they have dreams and ambition and it's part of their life uh, to do so, uh, you know, that's what living is all about. We make tough decisions. We know the risk. Uh, and it's unfortunate. We don't want to see anybody get hurt. And, and, I, and, and, and particularly sports has been so great. I mean, what I've learned from football... Uh, uh, and then I can apply to, you know, everyday life. Uh, yet I knew the risk. I knew they were great, you know. We always talked about high risk, high yield. And obviously sometimes high risk, uh, and, and you pay for it. It's unfortunate. I want to ask you, how does Tulane go on after this? It's a, it's a very difficult thing to do. I mean, as players, I think all you can do is uh, try to dedicate uh, your season um, to your teammate. Right. And, and, and try to go out and make this a, uh, an inspirational year. Uh, make it a year that uh, everyone will remember uh, yeah. at Tulane. Uh, and, and, and one in particular that he will always uh, be able to lean on. Let's uh, show you real quick, Devin Walker. And Devin, as I said, senior from, uh, from New Orleans. He was rushed to St. Francis uh, Hospital in Tulsa. He's under stable condition, but he has, as we mentioned, a cervical 
spine fracture and also a collapsed lung. Lots of you out there, though, reaching out with well wishes. And, and you know, this is a great thing about social media. In a time like this, it can also help uplift, uplift someone's spirits. How about this one from Kevin? says, love seeing the compassion in class from the Tulsa fans today in the midst of a horrific situation. And they, they were so classy about the that, way That was great. Sports it. brings out the best in people, especially in a situation like this, Kevin. Yeah, no question. And uh, here's another tweet that was from Felix Jones. Thoughts and prayers going out to Tulane football number 18, Devin Walker. And that's what it's all about right now because our thoughts and prayers with that young man, his family, who I'm sure is concerned, and his Absolutely. mom who just wants to get there and see her child. A parent's worst nightmare. You know, I was fortunate enough to survive a career. Uh, I always told my mom, don't worry, I will always get up. But that's sometimes not the case when yeah. you play this game. All right. We'll be back with much more in a moment. And as I said, our thoughts and prayers to Devin Walker and his family and all the best to that Tulane football family. When brilliant minds challenge conventional wisdom, they accomplish amazing things. They build dreams and inspire nations. They make the news and support it. When brilliant minds defy convention, they create, innovate, and explore, making discoveries that change the world for the better. Rice University, celebrating unconventional wisdom for 100 years. Welcome back, and we're also counting down today to a big one in the Rose Bowl. UCLA hosting number 16, Nebraska. And here's the question. Is the freshman, the kid, Brett Hundley, really ready and is Jim Moore's team ready to take that step? Can they compete against Nebraska today? I certainly think they can compete. He is a great young quarterback. Jim Moore has some great things to say about him. He's a film rat. He's all, he does a lot of studying, but he has to just remember that he doesn't have to do it by himself, Kevin. He has some talent on the outside. He got Shaq Evans, wide receiver, Jonathan Franklin, the tailback, and Joe Fourier. He has people around him to help him. Just has to remember that. He doesn't have to do it alone. Yeah, big Joe Fourier told us he was ready for this game. It'll be interesting to see. Still to come, though, second half of our game in Kansas clicking. It's not just a basketball school when Charlie Weiss gets this program going. Jayhawks up 17-13. Let's move. Quick, let's go. Y'all got it? Coming down. Come on, hurry up. Over there. Almost there. Here it comes. Raise it up. Showtime. Block by block, piece by piece, the Big 12 is standing strong. Halftime continues in Lawrence, Kansas. They're all shaking it right now. And a very entertaining first 30 minutes of play with the Jayhawks on top of the Rice Owls by 4, 17 13. And welcome back once again. Joel Myers along with Brian Baldinger. And Baldy, the first 15 minutes of play, too many turnovers. Five combined. Second quarter, they really got their act together. Yeah, and I think both teams are playing well right now. Both teams are able to control the football, but it was turnovers early. I mean, this is the first play by Kansas. They went to a reverse pass. Chris Cummington knocked Dane Chris down. The ball got picked off, and then Dante Moore, a kickoff return. He fumbled it, laid it down on Kansas. Kansas got 10 points off two turnovers, but then Rice found the run game. Turner Peterson off left tackle right there for a nice gain, and then he would finish that drive off with a two-yard touchdown run, and then Kansas got their running game going. Right here, and you're going to take a look at uh, Tony Pearson right up the middle, and then Skyler Miles scored from just a yard out and so Kansas at the end of the first half up 17 13 and really you take a look at the ball control that Rice has had 44 plays to Kansas 29 I mean if they didn't turn the ball over right now Rice would feel pretty good about how they're playing they got time of possession right here if they can limit the turnovers and continue the ball control it could be a promising second half for the Rice Owls coming up next Joe Myers, 
Well, the, it, away, it is going to be an interesting, as you mentioned, an interesting 30 minutes of play coming up because Kansas is going to have the football. Let's see if Kansas now, and they were exposed a little bit defensively in the first 30 minutes of play, especially to the second 15 minutes. See if Kansas tries to just grind it. Man, keep, play a game of keep away. Make sure their defense isn't on the field all that much. Bashir is going back deep along with Taylor Cox. Now we are just about set for the start of the second half as Chris Boswell gets into it. And does he ever once again right out of the end zone. Let's check in with the third member of our team once again Jim Knox Jim. All right Joel just got through talking to David Bailiff the head coach of Rice House. He says he's happy the way the offense worked in the first half something was not happy about those three turnovers. He thought they gave a Kansas 10 points right there. Also late in the second first half that is he was not pleased with his gap control on defense. He thought Kansas's offense gashed him a little too much. That's why they got in the end zone but should be a dandy second half here guys. All right, thank you, Jim. And what a job David Bayless has done in his sixth year there. Five seasons, leading the Owls to first bowl win in 50 years as Pearson takes off. Also, the first 10 win season since 1949. A lot of firsts under David Bayless in his sixth year. Julius White bringing down the running back. So let's, and I mentioned as you were scrambling back in, they were a little bit exposed, Kansas was, in the first half defensively. Mm -hmm. Let's see if they grind it now and try to keep the defense off well, the field. Be, that, I mean, that's what they did last week against San Diego State, especially in the second half. They went to the run game. They kept the defense off the field and kept them a little more rested. It'll be second and five. Here's it again. And loses about a half yard, maybe a yard. Paul Boris coming up pinching in and the junior from Scottsdale Arizona on top of the play well you know what we haven't seen from Pearson is the big you know the long run right now so credit Rice with some good open field tackling but you know the more carries he gets the more opportunities he's going to get the better the chances he's going to break one of these long runs and you just got to keep chipping away because he has that type of breakaway speed from anywhere on the field it'll be a big third down early in the second half the catch is made, but did he get it up? We got a great spot. It's taken in by Jim May Mundon, who's got the touchdown. I think they gave him the first down. Yes. Yeah, Kyle Prater was right there, the middle linebacker. He was right on the play. Here's Prater in the middle. He's going to come up and make the tackle. You know, his foot didn't go over the 35 yard line, but maybe the ball got right to it, which was enough. So Rice thought they had the stop. Instead, Kansas has the ball. Chris was good protection. Wide open. Patterson making a miss. And takes it out of the midfield strike. Boy, quick feet from the senior from the Steep Texas. 35 Texans on the Jayhawk roster. Nice protection, though. I mean, really, Dane Chris has a lot of room to survey the field and look at his second receiver. So figure they're going to hurry up on oh, the little turnaround. Kale Pitt, he's got it. And another first down to the 39. The pick didn't land well. I didn't like the way that tackle came. And yeah, he's in pain. Uh, his legs got bent back quickly. Mm. Yeah. Oh, man, it's horrible. His first play last week against San Diego State was a 43 yard touchdown pass. Watch the, watch the finish on this play against Bryce Callahan. Oh, see that, ugh, that left leg. I don't even want to look at that, Joe. I hate that. You know, he came up, he was up in the air, and then Callahan came in behind him, and that left leg got bent back. And uh, you, sometimes, you know, you get out of that okay. It just, it kind of shocks you. You got to walk it off, and then sometimes it's not so okay. He's a senior from Dodge City, Kansas. Football family, his father, Mark, played his college ball at Iowa State. And just two years ago was a backup quarterback. Here. So very talented young man, Kale Pick. Yeah, he led them in receiving just a week ago. And uh, look, he's he's you know this is a senior year. You play for this right now, but hopefully he can just walk this off and shake it off. Boy, he's trying to try to be tough. Yeah, he's isn't gotten he? it. He's gotten it. You know that. And yeah, he's hurt. Uh, I just I saw from up here, Joel, just the way he landed on that knee and he got bent back that time. Uh, you hope he can come back quick. So Chris has him rolling after that conversion on third and five and it's Mundine losing the ball but he never really had it they say. That was a serious collision waiting to happen. Yeah, I like the way Rice though is hitting. 
You know, they're coming up, they're laying the wood right now. Uh, you know, even when you catch the ball, you're getting hit immediately, immediately that time by uh, Nuosu. So second and 10 from the 39. Deep single is Pearson. He'll get it. And he's got a nice lane. And a little cut over to the right side. Boy, yards after potential contact all the way down to the 11-yard line for Tony Pearson. Serious moves. Well, watch what Kansas does on this play because suddenly they move the tight end in motion. But nobody adjusts here. All right, so nobody adjusts. And now you get an extra blocker over there. Now look at the edge. They seal the edge right there, and they're a man short. You know, in that motion, he comes over like that. You've got to come over. You've got to move defenders to anticipate the ball coming that direction. It's at the 11. Little trap play for Pearson. Down inside the 8, close to the 7. He can get a first down once again inside the 1. So Tony Pearson, 124 yards last week, 103 so far today. And we're at the outset of the second half. And they just uh, replaced him with Taylor Cox, his, uh, his companion back there in the backfield. There's a 40-pound difference. Yep. Cox about uh, 210 pounds. Pearson about a buck seven. Cox five seven. Come on, we go. Same play. Cox breaks the tackle. He's in. Touchdown, Kansas. So that's the old ramp play. The old ram where Trent Smiley, the tight end, is going to come over and trap the inside defensive lineman, and Cox is going to cut right off. Watch this wham play right now. There it is. Got the wham on the inside. Cox did a good job of just coming right behind him and hitting him right up the middle. Eight yard touchdown run for Taylor Cox. And now Kansas with their biggest lead of the day. It is up to 11 in counting on their opening drive of 75 yards to start the second half. So they beat to the ground game. Pearson, Cox finished it off. And the Jayhawks are up 24 to 13. You still think you caught it in me? No, don't tell me. Tell Tiny. And who you supposed to be? Backup, Hanley. What you looking at? <laughs> Cat-like reflexes. Oh. The Coors Light Silver Bullet Pint. It's bigger, it's resealable, it's still the coldest. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Light says don't get flagged for breaking the law. It's a cold, hard fact. 21 means 21. So keep yourself and your friends in the game. The exceptional start for the Kansas Jayhawks. Balance on their first drive of the second half and their biggest lead of the ball game now by 11. I think the spirit of the cheerleaders have helped. You know, I really do. As Taylor Cox scores his second touchdown of the season. Who is he? <laughs> Joe, I mean, it's the school spirit here. This is a great atmosphere. It's my first trip to Lawrence, Kansas. You're fired up all the time. Well, I mean, I am, but I mean, look at the view. It's beautiful. No arguments. It's the first time we've agreed today. Prologo <laughs> is going to kick it away with 11.47 to play in the third. You'll and come around, Bill. The nine play 75 yard drive, and it's a line drive. It'll be Sam McGuffey. And he turned the corner. Got one to beat. And nice move. Gets outside the 30. So Prologo knocks him out of bounds. <laughs> a 32-yard return and outstanding field position for the first drive of the second half thanks to that man Sam McGuffey now looking back on the possessions and there were some mistakes but the last two really nice long drives by Rice well really it was last three Joel but they fumbled on that uh, on the on the third previous one but really they, they had a they had their number here where it's a run pass option they're all looking to the sidelines right now Looking to see what the call is based on how many guys are in this box of Kansas. A few guys in the box, they run. The guys play the pass. 
Then you have the option. Here's the option right now. Short side option toss. Turner Peterson, good yardage. And let's see how Rice responds now because remember they were down by a dozen at halftime against UCLA to start the second half at home last week, and they only got 77 yards of total offense. But yeah, but the message has got to be like, and the players know this, Joel. They don't have to be told by the coach. They know they can move the football against the Kansas Jayhawks right now. They just have to continue to execute and convert the third downs when they, uh, you know, when the time comes. Big hard keeps it. And not exactly the lead that they were looking for. Josh Williams liked it, though, for the defensive end. How did that? Yeah, well, Josh Williams is a guy that transferred from Nebraska, and he reads this play absolutely perfect. See, that's the time. Now, now I've watched Taylor. He doesn't always make the right read. That ball right there should have been pitched. Bring the defensive end to him, take the hit, pitch the ball. But it's hard. It's hard to tell a quarterback to make that right read every single time. Needs six on third down. Here comes a blitz off the outside, and... Enough okay, pressure to put McCarr down before Prince Kansi ever got there. Yeah. And they came with pressure from the outside, and really Taylor McCarr thought he could beat it by stepping up. Here they come off the edge, of both edges here. And uh, Prince Candy is a guy that, you know, was able to get him to the ground. I don't know if he got him to the ground or the feet just came out from underneath him. Andre Gautreaux. He is going to put it away and soccer style line drive picked up on one hop by David Patterson. Good coverage downfield. That's an effective play. Yeah, by the rise out. It never was going to be set up with that kind of kick, that kind of punt. So defensively, Jayhawks got it done on the first series of the second half, and they get it right back. Fox College Football presented by Frost Brews Coors Light. It's the game's most refreshing beer. By Mazda, we believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. And by Whataburger, proud to serve it hot and fresh, 24 hours a day. Welcome back once again. Beautiful setting. The campus, the University of Kansas in Lawrence, where Memorial Stadium, Joel Myers, Brian Baldinger, Jim Knox down the sideline, and Kansas gets it the second time for the second half, five minutes in. They're up by 11. And the tailback tandem of Pearson and Cox has been very effective. And a nice two, two headed punch. As it's going to be Pearson with a nice alley over to the left side. He spun around and dropped after a gain of about five. And, and when talking to Charlie Weiss yesterday, this is one of the deepest areas of their entire team because you bring Sims back, James Sims, who's missing the first three, uh, suspended by Coach Weiss for a DUI with good reason suspended. And they are really deep at tailback. Well, they're deep, but you're going to need depth. You're going to need depth in the Big 12 here. Uh, the schedule's going to get tougher. Uh, injuries do happen to running backs. You know, so if you can get three instead of two, and they're all effective, and you can play them equally, that's a better deal. On the play fake, Chris. And there's going to be a hold. Patterson tried to come back. He was going to be wide anyway, but there was a lot of infighting between Gaines and Patterson. We'll call the hold. Passing the fairy. Defense number 15. Ball we place at the spot of the foul. And it's an automatic first down. So they'll take that more yardage instead of five of the hold. No, we were just talking about the Tucson. They went over the 120 yard mark last week. Pearson and Cox. <laughs> and look at their averages. The averages are good. Obviously, you know, Pearson's getting a lot more carries so far today. And he's, you know, he's just quicker through the hole right now. Deep drop on the play fake. A ton of time and behind Patterson. What about the arm strength of Dane Crest? But I think he throws the ball well. You know, I think it it's, takes a little bit, you know, trying to get the timing down with his receivers right now. And that's a deeper throw, one that we haven't really seen him make. The deep cross today, 20 yards down the field. And so I think... The arm strength looks good to me, Joel. The ball comes out with a tight spiral. I just think he just needs more time with this receiving court. Charlie Wise told us yesterday the consistency and chemistry mm -hmm. is the one chemistry. thing he needs to improve on with his wide receivers more than anything else. And it will take time. He hasn't played for two years. This is game two for Dane Crest. 
Middles available. And this tight end Monday, who's already got a touchdown, has a first down. See that time they blitz the middle linebacker right here. Here comes middle linebacker Tanner. Puts a hit right on Chris, but he stayed in there. He took the hit just the way he's supposed to. So Prater plants him. And uh, the result is a first down to Mundine. And, ball, and the ball was out long yeah. before Mundine turned around. On time. Three catches, 39 yards now for Mundine. Oh, is that... Big one over to the left side. Big guy goes through it, but I think I could have made it through that one. That was a huge hole. As it's time now for a Mazda game break. Let's check in once again with Kevin Fraser and Marcus Allen. Guys. Joel, first ever SEC game at Kyle Field and Texas A&M handling their business. Christian Michael, the short plunge for the TD. How about this? A&M 17 visiting Florida 13. Wow. Yeah. Kevin, uh, Florida got up to a slow start last week, remember. They were down to Bowling Green State at home in the first half. A lot of empty seats. I was surprised at Gainesville last week as well. Is on the carry. It's a gain of four. Julius White bringing down Taylor Cox. But is there apathy now all of a sudden around the Florida program? Well, I think there might be a, a little bit of that because they're no longer the team that's the hot pick to win a national championship. I mean, Tim Tebow kind of spoiled them a little bit down there. Urban Meyer kind of spoiled them. Steve Spurrier spoiled them. And so now you get Bowling Green coming into uh, the swamp. The, the excitement just isn't there right now. And the heat on Will Muschamp. Cox with another first down. It'll be at the 28-yard line. Boris coming up, along with Callahan at the end of the play. I like what I see from Taylor Cox. I mean, first of all, he's, he makes a lot of moves. He makes people miss in the open field. He's got a little of that shake and bake. You know, a little bit like you were last night. You know, just weaving your way in. Waiting for you. You know, just weaving your way to pick up that, that mushroom cheeseburger of yours. It's at the 28. <laughs> Tarting as usual. Study on the play fake. Crest hit as he releases it. It's up for grabs and couldn't get to it. And fortunately for him, he overshot everybody. Only one even close to it was the D back over there for Rice. And he couldn't get to it. Julius White. This is the second time that uh, Chris has been hit on this particular drive right now. Nice job by Covington coming back. Remember Covington went down early in that first quarter with a little bit of a knee sprain. It's almost like a leg whip. Yeah. <laughs> That's not comfortable. Now uh, we can get him down. 24-13. <laughs> Pearson has returned on a second and ten. Middle screen. And almost taken away. Could have been picked easily. Threw it right with the pressure coming. He th Jared Williams could have had it. Bauer had the pressure, and there's a flag. You know, Joe, I don't know that Kansas needs to get away from the run game. You know, with those two backs they have, I don't know if they, they need to drop back and throw it here. Holding offense, number 69. It's a 10 yard penalty and replay second down. That's the experienced center, Marin Jelly, the senior from Austin. Austin Westlake, so. Take a look at him here. He's just trying to get away. I mean, he, what he's doing is Joe, he's trying to get out on the screen. So he's just trying to use the defenders, the defensive lineman's momentum against him to throw him to the ground. You, we do that every day on screens as offensive linemen. And he gets get flagged on it. I, you know, you can't change your technique, but I didn't think that was a good call by the umpire. On the play thing with Pearson, he coming, Chris doesn't feel it, but got a break, and he goes down anyway. Boy, it looked like he was going to get pummeled by Shaheen, but he slipped under it. Well, Shaheen is the nose tackle, and he's going to come all the way around on what you call a loop. Just an end tackle game, and really, when Kansas drops back right now, good things aren't really happening to this offense, but when they hand off to either one of the backs, generally they're gaining good chunks. Back-to-back -back negatives, though, and now out of field goal territory. Leading by 11, only 11, with a lot of time left in the third. And we're going to get a timeout. Timeout, KU. So they used one very early in the second half on a third and forever. Interesting. 
6-18 to play on an absolutely perfect day to be in Lawrence, Kansas. Game number two for Kansas and Rice. And it's been a very good one so far. Stay with us on Fox. Rice, of course, they prefer night games, but they are working this afternoon in Lawrence, Kansas. And welcome back once again to the 11-point game. And let's see if this timeout that Kansas just burned and used early in the second half on a third and 25 comes back to burn them. If the game gets close down the stretch. Chris needs 26 for a first down. And it's Bashir's. Not close. Nope. So they burn the timeout on third and 25 to check it down to Bashir's like that. Really, they should have been just thinking about playing field position up 11 here in the third quarter, I think. Punt coming up. And going back, they're going to put the wide receiver for the Owls. Been very busy today. Jordan Taylor or will he go back? No. Instead, it's going to be Julius wow. White. And, well, Doherty coming out. He's going to try a 53-yarder. His longest last year was 37. Be careful about a low trajectory to try and take it this far. It's going to be a 53-yard attempt. Will it get there? No. Wide left anyway. If it had the distance, it was hooked. Now, great field position for Rice. That'll take us to a timeout and has the momentum also shifted after Kansas drove deep once again into Rice territory and comes away empty. Welcome back once again to one of the favorite campuses for us to come to each and every year on the Big 12 Tour. University of Kansas in Lawrence, Joel Myers, Brian Baldinger, and downstairs we go to Jim Knox. All right, Joel, you talked about that momentum switch, and I think it has come over to right sidelines. Defense came back. They're on the bench right now. They were pumped about that defensive stand. Coach Slater right now drawing up some new assignments for the defense right behind us. And these guys got a little momentum in their step, guys. We'll see what happens. Let's see if the offense can capitalize, Jim. They get it back at their own 36. They went three and out with a punt right from the starting point. A little counteraction. It's Charles Ross bending it outside and barely bumped out of bounds on the edge. Greg Brown got him over there. Otherwise, he could go down the sideline, so it's a minimal game. And, and they went three and out with a punt after McDuffie gave him a great field position the last time. Yep. So really, I mean, it's just up to you, you, what we haven't seen for Rice is the big play. I mean, they've got to kind of keep chipping away, chipping away. But you think if you blow these safeties to sleep, I mean, look at where they're, the depth of them right now. They're sitting at about eight yards deep. You think, like, maybe you could take advantage of a big play. Big hard along those lines gets a first down. Great grab. Man, it was a tough one. It was Taylor Cook. His first catch, the senior from Eagle Lake, Texas. Wow, he's the biggest of a big group of tight ends at six foot seven. And that's what he does. He just kind of throws it up, kind of a dangerous throw across his body, but a beautiful one handed catch by Cook. But in practice, he's got a six seven guy. He's like a post. He's a transfer from the University of Miami. Inside of five to play in the third. Ross bouncing around, good yardage, making a miss into the secondary. Gets out of an angle tackle for an extra three or four, down to the 31 and another first down as he's dropped by Heaney. I saw a couple good jump cuts from Charlie Ross that time as he follows uh, the pulling left guard on the play. Nico Carlson on the play, then he makes a couple people miss and if he get his own guys out of the way, he might still be running. Missed most of last season with an injury, so he's rounded a medical redshirt. So he's only a junior this year. Turner Peterson takes over. And all of a sudden, a first down at the Kansas 31. Set up by great field position on a 53-yard field goal try. Little jet action for McGuffey. He gets outside. And McGuffey turns the corner for good yardage. Takes a shot from Tyler Patman, who delivered one as well. He's down to the 24 for a gain of seven. I tell you, if you watch Kansas defense right here, you know, Dave Campo, the defensive coordinator, I mean, he's learning how to coach defense in this Big 12, but they're a very stationary defense. They get lined up. They don't really disguise. They, they're stationary. You know, as a quarterback, you're looking at that. Nobody's moving. You, you can kind of take that little picture right there and snapshot of where they're at, and you know exactly what you're looking at. They bring McGuffey into the backfield. McCormick in trouble and losing yardage on the sack. 
good penetration. Bakari in the backfield. So Tunde Bakari, a senior from Woodbridge, Virginia. Uh, just a, you know, the Sam linebacker. So he just comes up. He's coming to play the option. Does a good job of really playing right through the back, Turner Peterson. And he doesn't slow him up at all. In an 11 point game, this is big. Inside of three left in the third. And a third and a long six. Now McCarr, can he make a miss? Gets close, but doesn't get the first down, shot by a yard. And it almost looked like his back came up early. Peterson. Yeah, you know, I think that was, you know, a quarterback draw option all the way. He saw the, the rush. They saw him coming off the edges that time. The, the middle opened up. But I don't think there's any hesitation here uh, to go for it on fourth down. Well, you got a great place kicker. You could make it an eight-point game. And you, yeah. got a, you got a quarterback that's a good option if he wants to keep it. Peterson stays in the back here on fourth of the yard. It'll be Peterson. He's got it. Lowers his shoulder into Tharp. And he's easily got the first down inside the 19, close to the 18. You know, that Turner Peterson, he, he changed his number to 26 in honor of King Hill, maybe Rice's most famous player, former number one draft pick in the NFL. But uh, he that's what you got to do with the 220 pounds. Put your head down and run right through the defender and get the first. Little counteraction. Peterson dropped after a gain of about three. And you bring up that King Hill passed away, unfortunately, before the start of the season. But fortunately, Turner Peterson got to go to hospice and spend some time and visit with King Hill uh, before he passed away. Yeah, I mean, it really, NFL folklore, the first uh, pick in the NFL draft in 1958 by the Chicago Cardinals. That's when Chicago had three teams playing in the city. Second and long. Pocket holds up well. McCall floats back in the end zone and he overshoots him. He had him wide open too. It was available for Jordan Taylor. And that's the, the big play that, uh, you know, they haven't had today and it was there. The safeties were low to sleep. Their eyes aren't, you know, in the back of the end zone. And Taylor gets behind him and McCall misses a, a clean shot. So now third and seven. Just shy of the 15. Backfield five of the seven. Here comes the heat. McCart gets away momentarily. Can he make a play? He's looking for a block and dives, but it'll be well short of the first down outside of the 10. They'll put him down at the 11. Short of the first down by three. Well, it was a spread that time. You know, no backs in the backfield, and Dave Campo sent two. So they had a five man rush, and this is all McCart can do at this point. Just try to salvage whatever he can out of that play. Michael Reynolds, the sophomore from Wichita, busted up the pocket right away. So they'll look at a Jayhawk. I think it's Prince Candy who's down there right now. The outside linebacker. It'll be a fourth and three. Right and there. he's been out there every snap defensively. He's been running and chasing on those option plays on the outside. Oh, yes. oh man, friendly man fire. Taken. Yeah. Accidental by Lubbock Smith, the safety just ran right into him to finish it. Euless, Texas, right by. Dallas Fort Worth Airport. If he can just get up and walk off under his own power. The shock factor. Yeah. Good to see him back up now. So it is going to be the field goal unit coming out. Yeah, that's a bad sign to see him. With a bad wheel coming off the field. They're not that deep defensively, and especially on the backside after talking to Dave Campo. Uh, I'm talking about the second bit. 
Yeah, they got depth on the defensive line, but the linebackers and secondaries are a little thin. It'll be a 29-yard attempt for Boswell. Should be a chip shot by his hands. And it's down. Man, good, even with the laces facing him, because it wasn't a great exchange a great, by the holder. Not a great snap. Good hold. So Klein Kubiak did a good job, son of Gary Kubiak, to get it in place, and it's down to an eight-point deficit. Mazda game break time. Let's check in with Kevin Fraser and Marcus Allen. Guys. Joel, USC has their thunder and lightning attack, but it's real lightning that's holding things up at MetLife Stadium right now. Fans asked to head in for cover. We're still waiting on the second half to begin. All right. We'll get updates throughout the afternoon from you, Kevin, on that situation. We've got 44 seconds left in the third. How valuable is this hold by Klein Kubiak? Well, you mentioned it. Look at him, that ability just to get the ball down. Even though the laces are facing the kicker, you always want the laces to face, uh, to face the goalpost. And you can see, I mean, that's an appreciation by Boswell for Klein Kubiak to get that ball down. Of course, his dad did that for a long time, backing up John Elway yes. with the Denver Broncos. So he's been around a good holder his whole life. To Boswell with that field goal, two away from Hamrick, the all-time lead among place kickers at Rice. He's already the record holder for six over 50 yards. Gets into this one, and a touchback will put it at the Kansas 25. So Kansas has used a timeout, gave a short field to Boswell and the Rice Owls, and they got points out of it. Mm -hmm. They stalled inside the red zone, but they did get three to make it a one-score game. That's three red zone trips, though, that have ended up in field goals. And so, you know, that's really been the difference in the game right now. This eight-point spread has been decided by the red zone defense of the Jayhawks as Dane Christ breaks the huddle here. Christ in the passing department. 13 of 21 for 126. Kicked off one time, has one touchdown toss. And good pocket protection going deep and just over shooting on the outside. Get a good look at Terzilli. The sophomore from Butler, New Jersey. Well, that's one of the few deep shots that uh, Kansas has taken today. And I thought the trajectory that time by Chris was wrong. It was a little too flat. Kind of want to, you don't want to overthrow that go route like that. Kind of want to let your guy have an opportunity to go get it. Maybe put a little more air on that. Ball. Over the top. Over the top. It'll be second and ten to the 25. Oh, Big hole. Wow. Pearson will get through that. And he'll get a first down. With that kind of speed and that kind of hole. Well, the latest with Jim Knox. Jim. All right, Joe, looks like Prince Candy is through for the day. The fine linebacker at Kansas on the training table right now. They're about to bring over some ice and put it on his right knee. So Kansas at that linebacker position getting a little weaker right now. We talked about the lack of depth there. They're deep at the running back spot on the final carry of the quarter belonging to Tony Pearson. He's already up to 121 yards on 17 today. So 17 attempts, and he's made the most of it with a seven-yard average. Looks fresh as can be, too, does it? We get ready for the final 15 minutes of regulation, and a very good one going on right now between Conference USA and the Big 12, with Kansas up by eight. Here come the... Hey, yo, I lost audio. What happened? What? Oh, it better not be. What's going on? It's time to put a stop to this. Yay, yeah, yay? Yeah. The Coors Light Silver Bullet Pint. It's bigger, it's resealable, it's still the coldest. They call me Hollywood. Here come the big show. Big show. Get out of my booth. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Start of the fourth quarter in Lawrence, Kansas, and welcome back once again. Time now for our Coors Light Freeze Camp in an eight point game on a really beautiful autumn afternoon in Lawrence, Kansas. And both teams is showing the ability to move the ball on the ground more than through the air. And it's, we talked about a close game, it's almost identical. First downs, 20 to 19. That's Kansas on top by one. But it's great to see the faithful out here for the Jayhawks after the struggles they've had over the last two and a half seasons and the student body here in force. Well, you know, one of the great sayings, I guess, in college sports, rock, chalk, Jayhawk, 
Not sure exactly what it means. Nobody seems to really know, but they love saying it. Tanner Cox Ooh, there's a hit. pounds it across the 40. You love it. To the 42. You want to get down there, don't you? Oh, well, there's, I just see uh, Tanner Leyland right there kind of limping off the field. A converted safety at defensive end. You know, Rice had lost three defensive ends to injuries in the preseason, and they had moved the safety, Tanner Leyland, there. And he just got banged up in that collision. So depth really an issue here for the Rice Owls on defense and seeing players going off the field on both sides right now. And you can see the concern. Yeah. He's a junior from Katy. Katy, Texas, just on the outside of Houston, the most recruited city in America for well, college and football. And we talk to coaches regularly about especially with the quarterbacks yeah. coming out of the Lone Star State and especially from the Houston Metroplex. Well, I mean, you start with Andrew Luck, right? I mean, right right from that area. But, uh, yeah, so many. That Katy High School, I mean, big 5A school there in the state of Texas. What about Matthew Stafford? Yeah, well, Matthew Stafford right from Highland Park in Dallas. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you're taking a look at uh, some of these, you know, T Ryan Tannehill tomorrow from the state of Texas gets his debut for the Miami Dolphins. There are 35 Jayhawks from the Lone Star State of Texas, and it's very similar to the way Missouri recruits Texas. Yet to be determined how their move to the SEC is going to impact the recruit in the state of Texas. It's Cox. And they, boy, did they read that play early? Penetration off the edge, and they dropped him to the backfield. Well, you know, Lawsuit was there. Also, quote Cody Bauer, Covington. The difference, though, in that play. With that handoff to Dane Chris. Dane Chris isn't a threat to run the ball. So you're just keen on Cox the whole time. You're keen on the back. If you're keen on the back, you're going to get to the football. Huge third down and an eight-point game. Chris needs seven, almost eight, and short. Bashir's what a great play in the secondary by Philip Gaines. No question. Big, big time open field tackle. He gave him the catch to Bashir's, and Bashir's is slippery now. I mean, he's their returner. Kickoff returner. Are they going to gamble? Wow. Well, now, let's or at least see. try to get him offside. Yeah. Now the play is being signaled in to Chris. Well, maybe this is how concerned they are about Rice's ball control offense that if they give it up to him, punt, maybe they don't get it back. Maybe they're going to gamble with that experienced offensive line. Power back stays in there, Taylor Cox. And now. They go to another shift. Well, they were shifting to see if Rice would move, which they did. Yep. And Kansas got them to jump. Yep. Unabated to the quarterback, number 90, on the defense. It's a five-yard penalty and a first down. Cody Bauer is called for it. There are a couple of others. And that's this is a design play. I mean, here it is, a bunch formation. Watch this quick shift. Three guys move at once. And really, that's exactly what it was designed to do. They were never going to run the play. They were just going to shift motion and see if they could get Rice to jump, but they did. Now on first down, penetration in the backfield. Taylor Cox put down immediately by Julius Whitey. Made sure he wasn't going to turn the corner. But you see, that's where Charlie Weiss, you know, and that, those years under Belichick comes in. Because those kind of plays that they just did on fourth and a yard, they rehearsed those plays. Situational plays, you know, all year long like that. Second and 11. Low throw, good grab. Going underneath to make sure it didn't skip. Damon Patterson scooped it. Let's check in with Jim Knox. Oh, looks like Tanner Leland is out for the rest of the game. His mom right behind him, right knee right now. They were looking at it. It does not look good. It looks like he's through for the day. All right. Thank you for the update, Jim. Think about it here, Joel. If Kansas takes this ball down and scores and just kind of really widens this lead here, think about that fourth down play that they ran to hold on to the ball and how important it was, the execution. Need a yard. Cox has a lot more than a yard. He's got a first down with Nawasu on his back. 
Yeah, the first down all the way to the 32. Well, look, look back to the first half. Ten points off turnovers by the Rice Owls. Yep. They're beating themselves once again, and they made mistakes against UCLA in the opener. Yeah, and if they lose this game today, that's what David Bale is going to say. He's going to say, we didn't get out physical, we didn't get out schemed, and they didn't. They made mistakes that hurt themselves. Cox again from the 32, tripped up. Falling inside the 28 for four. Julius White again on the stop, and Cox has to leave because of the helmet coming off. He understands it. And look, the, the idea behind this rule change this year and the enforcement of the rule, the players know it. They don't have to be told to come off the field. They know the rule is to buckle up. You know, we buckle up when we get in a car. That's the state law. you got to buckle up and buckle both sides of the chin strap. You know, and a lot of guys, they, they got really careless with it. Some guys weren't even buckling up at all. Right. You know, just out there playing. Peterson, or Tony Pearson, rather, is taken over in the backfield. Ton of time. Pressed in the corner for the Shears. Had a better Ooh. shot at it by the D-back Callahan, who's already got an interception. Well, Callahan's got good ball skills. I am impressed. That ball's in the air a long time, but he made the right cut with that ball in the air to jump in front of the receiver here at the very end. One of the longest throws by Chris today. A nice job by Cal. I don't think he, even if he caught it, if he would have been in bounds, but still it was a good break on the ball. He had six interceptions as a redshirt freshman. Yeah. Last season, all conference USA Apple mentioned. So he's a natural at that position. Mm -hmm. It'll be a third down. Close to seven. Inside Pearson weaving his way. He thought he had it, so did I, but boy, closing in a hurry was Baker <laughs> out of the Megan Forrest out of the secondary. And Baker on top of him. I believe it was Baker who really got him the sophomore from San Antonio. So trying to stop the ground game. It was an issue last week. It continues to be that way for the Owls. Now Doherty. This is big. Two score game three makes it. 40 yard attempt. Just missed from 53. Hit one earlier from 29. High snap is down. And hits the crossbar or the upright and doesn't get the proverbial members bounce. So home field advantage, forget about it. Right into the upright and back into the end zone. It stays a one-score game. Eight-point lead for the Jayhawks with 10-21 to play. Fox College Football presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. Also, buy your Texas Ford dealers. Head to your Texas Ford dealer for the summer sales event for the best in Texas. And by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com. They're not leaving. They're actually, there are more people coming into the ballpark now with 10 21 to play. Well, they got their studying done. You know, <laughs> they got the lab is over. From the 24, play fake and the card on a jump ball. He was trying to get it to Charles Ross. It was interesting because he had his wide receiver going down the middle of the field and he had a couple of different looks. But he threw the, the long one for the tailback. Well, that seems to be the thing that's missing right now is just a deep ball. I mean, we've seen McCarg, you know, we've seen his toughness, his running ability, the option ability, but really the deep ball is what's missing. He's missed a shot in the end zone uh, to one of his receivers, one of his tight ends. He's now 16 of 27, 146 yards. Longest completion today, just 16. The bubble from McGuffey. And not much outside. Three, four yards at the most. So talk about an important third down. McDougal popped him out. Yeah, you know, these bubble screens, I mean, they're just handoffs, right? I mean, it's three yards. I'm almost rather give it to Charlie Ross or Turner Peterson. See what they can do up the middle. McCarr gets him up. Now looks at the play. Can they capitalize? After the missed field goal. Too long. And is it a timeout? Oh, yes. Got they use the first for the second half. So David Baylor with 9.41 to Time play out. knows right. of the importance of this snap. That's their Come first. back and see what they go with. 
college football all season long. The biggest stars and the greatest conferences. Fox College Football all season long. Nine forty-one left in regulation. Our cores light. Game summary and a very close one between the Jayhawks and the Owls. And neither team has really put it all together here in the second half offensively. It looked like Kansas was going to have some rhythm. But give Rice credit. Now Rice looking at a third and long, and they're only four of eleven on their third down tries today. That's their best pass rusher coming off the corner. Out of the timeout. And two left for each team. Down the stretch now. On the low snap, McCall has to step up. And in scramble mode, it's battered away. Patton didn't look back, but timed it well. And he got that pressure from Tobin Apuram, who I talked about before the play. Turned a corner and forced McCarg to come off the edge. Here he is, beating the left tackle on the play, John Huddy. And that forced McCarg to leave the pocket. Throw to his left on the run, which is tough for any right-handed quarterback. But the coverage by Patman was was very good as well. Patterson waits for the punt. Taylor Cook. So they go three and out with a punt and a bad punt. Short one taken in with a fair catch and a good decision by Patterson. Up close to the 42-yard line, only a 31-yard punt. So the Jayhawks trying to seal the deal when we come back and looking for their second win to start the new season. Now that looks more like it. Charlie's Angels. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Go yeah. back the other yeah. way. <laughs> Those aren't the Charlie's Angels we were looking for. There's some guys all they get is just the exclamation point. You know, they don't even get a letter. Today's Brown hand center, great hands of the game, and it belongs to the defensive back. 3 0 at the time. Rice chance to capitalize points off a turnover instead it's Greg Brown taking it away well he jumped right in front of the freshman Dennis Parks the rookie uh, freshman wide receiver I don't think Parks has been out there on the field after not going after that ball the way Greg Brown did now at 926 to play Kansas in great field position but they bury Pearson what a play by Bauer Mazda game break time as we check in with Kevin Fraser and Marcus Allen Joel, there's something cooking in Corvallis. Remember, Oregon State predicted to finish last in the Pac-12 North. Uh-oh, they are putting to number 13, Wisconsin. Brandon Cooks, the TD there, and before he can blink, it's 10 nothing Beavers. Thank you, Kevin. That's a scare. Early. Very early, but good start for those yep. Beavers in sure Corvallis. Pearson trying to bend it outside, a nice lay. Put down in the secondary by Philip Gaines. So there is a flag at the end of the play, at the point of the stop. This is going to be interesting because it brings up third and about eight. Holding number 20 on the offense. The 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. Wide receiver Bashir. Yeah. You know, and I'm just thinking about this. You know, we haven't seen Tony Pearson at all in the screen game. And you just wonder why wouldn't you screen to a kid with that type of acceleration? And speed, get him out in space. Coach's box right down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drop the suggestion. Okay. Where's the that? Out. Where's that suggestion in box? <laughs> I don't know if he's going to take one from a over the hill announcer here. Inside of eight and a half to play. Inside, and what a hit they put on Monday. He caught it, and it's shows his ability to hang out of the football it was simultaneous yeah Julius White was right there on the hit Julius White and taking incomplete. over. yeah Julius White taking over for Corey Frazier at the safety position he couldn't hang on no I think the hit had a lot to do with it though yeah the ball popped right out so now it's going to be third still close to 20 stops the clock that helps rice in an eight-point ball game Rice is only going to rush three, so they're going to drop eight into coverage, try and keep it all in front of them here on this play. Roll Chris and real short to Patterson, and again, stops the clock going yep. out of bounds. That was a short series. I mean, from a time standpoint, that series only took about a minute, Joe. 
they got it a little over yeah less than they got it a little over nine minutes to play so it's interesting the play selection that's a nice piece of math you just did thank you nine minutes down to 817 it's less than a minute inside so now McGuffey is waiting for the Doherty punt he can't afford to do what we just saw on the last one from Rice they go after him good one very good one he'll be taken at the 14 block in the back yeah it's coming back block in the back man it negates the return so after the 49 yard punt all the way back it was Alex Francis trying yep. to get there yeah but then you know that penalty really puts you in the hole I mean rather than you'd rather not even do anything and just you know fall down now they're going to be deep in the hole to start this series and that's uh that's a long hard day they have had one 94 During yard drive return, though. illegal block in the back number 19 on the return team half the distance to the goal and it's a first down so a huge hill coming up for the rise owls on the road in big 12 country as they get it back deep in their own territory down by eight Inside of eight to play and a very close one, but now a 93 yard field coming up for the Rice Owls. Fox College football kicks off later today. Number 16, Nebraska, taking on UCLA. Well, tell us what you think and vote on the college football social poll of the week. What is the strongest conference in your estimation, top to bottom in college football? Log on to facebook.com slash Fox Sports to cast your vote. And the poll results are going to air later today on Fox College football. Can you go against the SEC in that poll, Joel? Yeah, if you're dreaming. <laughs> It'll be from the seven. First and ten. Charles Watts. Not much available. Give him three, falling forward to the ten. So two timeouts remaining for Rice with seven and a half to play. We've talked about the lack of ability to throw the long ball. Yep. Their longest completion of the day, 16 yards. Now they can't get anything down the field. And they've had opportunities. There, there's been some open receivers. Uh, they just haven't connected yet. Oh, safety safeties are sitting right there at uh, eight yards. I mean, they don't fear the deep ball at all. It's Jordan Taylor, and it sets up another critical third down this late in the game. It'll be 33 from the 14, dropped immediately by Greg Brown, who's had a solid effort once again. Well, he, he led the team in tackles a week ago. He's had the interception here today. And when they come to his side, whether it's in the run or the pass, he is a sure tackle. And just showing a lot of uh, a lot of guys at the line of scrimmage. See if they come after him. They keep Ross in the backfield. Wide side, power side, and it's going to be the option with Ross. And he breaks into the secondary, gets it out across the 20. So the bread and butter, it's the option for a first down to the 21. And I got to be honest with you, Joel. On second down here in this second half, they have been throwing the ball for two and three yard games. But they're better off running the option and getting the ball into Ross's hands or Peterson's hands to pick up bigger yards than they are throwing three yard bubble screens that they've featured, it seems, you know, at least once every three downs. Earlier in the game, in the first half, Rice Owls had a 94 yard 16 play drive. So they've done it before. Now in crunch time, middle of the field, it's available. What a grab. It's McDonald and barely tripped up, going down inside the 45 of the 40. McDougal just barely got him. Yeah, but I know John Reagan is looking at the depth of the safeties, the offensive coordinator, Rice, just like I was, and going, you know what? You can't play us eight yards deep. We've got guys that can get down the field. Now, that's their longest gain of the day in the air. And really, McDonald, if he could have kept his feet, might still be running. First down on the 38 yard completion. It's at the 41 of the Jayhawks. It's available on the outside. It's Taylor once again. The, there's about 10 yards, the corner, off of Taylor. Yep. But like, I mean, that you have to take. You know, I mean, you could just tap your helmet and check it. Audible call. You want to get it out there that that part of the field where they just do it there's still a little bit of sun over there I see guys kind of shading their eyes it's still a little difficult to see if you're looking back into it so Taylor his favorite target today 
the most catches among the Owls. He's got eight for 72 with that one. On a first down, pocket holds up, passes there. Taylor's got it inside the five. First and goal, all the way to the two. That's a beautiful throw and catch. I mean, that's double coverage right there, but Taylor went up at six foot five. He just out jumped the corner and the safety on this play. Nice double pump. Look at this. That's a great job of timing that leap for the ball. Now Ross, before they can get set, is he in? It looks like it. Yes, touchdown Rice. Get ready for the two-point conversion. That's the next thing you have to immediately in your mind. You can't celebrate here. You got to get yourself set here to convert this two-point conversion. So they have the, we talked about the 94-yard drive. Good push. Good push up there. Drew Carroll, excellent job at right guard. Working with Richards to get that push, to get the, uh, the necessary yard. So Ross into the end zone. That's a 93-yard drive. Beautiful. Oh, in crunch time, no less. And, and that's that's got to do it. Watch, watch, watch the right guard, Carroll there. Now, this will be reviewed. We'll see if the ball crossed the famed white stripe, the goal line here, any part of it. And that would confirm. Ed Ardito is the referee today. Big 12 officials. They are not replacement officials. McCarg, <laughs> 81 yards through the air that time, four for four. Well, let's take a look here. Let's just see where Ross is. Nice. Now, the ball, you can't tell if the knee is down there. Now, the ball is crossing the goal line, but perhaps the knee was down. It looks like he's on top of the body. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it might looks have like just he's on a right over the body. Now, let's just take a look at the knees. Let's see. No, I don't think it ever went down. The knee never hit the ground. He actually used the, the, the defender to leverage himself over, Bakari. Bakari went low, and that knee never hit the ground. I think this uh, call is going to stand. Now, what they got to be talking about, John Reagan and the offense over there on the two-point conversion, should, they, should this uh, call stand? is are we going to run it here we're going to throw the option or are we going to throw to one of those big tight ends call is going to stand i like the option call i do too but i think After right now further review the ruling on the field stands is called touchdown and with a right-handed quarterback and where the ball is placed right now consider the wide side of the field yep you got a lot, lot more room to the right i like the i like the back Turner Peterson. Turner Peterson, who had scored the only touchdown of the day for the Rice Owls, is in there at tailback. So now, for the time, trailing by two. McDonald, the motion man. Looking back, he's got him wide open and can't bring it down. It hung up in the air. Unfortunately, Bakari came over and took care of Luke Wilson to the back of the end zone. So Rice cannot convert, but they didn't take that much time to travel 93 yards. Well, this is sprint right option, and there's a kind of a safety valve on the back end, back end, and that's the tight end. Remember, there's no force out in football. And so, you know, he just kind of floated that ball. He can't get his feet down, and that's the right play on the back end by Bakari to force him out of bounds. So it stays 24 22. Yeah, it's been a long time since Rice has been able to win away from home. And you look at the longest road losing streaks among FBS teams Kansas, 16 straight. Rice, not far behind with 11 consecutive. Now, on the other hand, you know, non BCS teams coming here to Kansas, they have had a great record. 25 and 2 in non-conference. Non-conference right. games. So one of those may either improve or fall today. So Rice down by two. They did not have, they still have two timeouts on the board with yep. 4.47 to play. They took control of the ball with 7.43 left, so they used less than three off the clock. Now, the return coming up. Man, it won't. What a kick. <laughs> it's out. So Boswell gets the job done. And now Kansas, the pressure on the Jayhawks all of a sudden, up by only two with the ball at their 25. And Joe, prior to the last drive by Rice, we saw Charlie Weiss come over and dress the entire offense of Rice. 
and he was probably laying it all out there for him. You know, I mean, this is a game that we need to win. I think he was planting a seed in his mind about how to finish games here and what they need to do in order to ensure that. So this is a crucial drive to to Kansas today and really to the year that they might have. Come on, a power formation. Plowing his way up the middle is Taylor Cox for four up to the 29. Well, we just talked about the interception by Greg Brown. If it's not a pick by Brown, the least that Rice is going to get out of that with a 3 0 lead is yep. a field goal, yep. which would right now be the difference. Put, yeah, they'd be up by, well, they'd be up by two because they would have gone, uh, they probably would have gone for two, only up by one. After that, and boy, oh, good stop. Coming in to turn it in and making the hit. It's an outstanding play again who's going to show up for their coaches on film. Julius White's been on top of it all day. Julius White, is, you know, you know, he's gotten an opportunity to play because of the injury to Corey Frazier, and he's thrown his body all over the place. And that's a good job of setting the edge by Julius White coming in from the safety position. I said they like to play three safeties, and that's an example. A guy with size, athletic ability, and White's kind of banged up a little bit on the play. And you talked about Frazier, though, but he's had knee problems. So yep. they monitor that to mm -hmm. see if he can play from week to week. Of course, Corey Frazier, the son of Leslie Frazier, the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. Sure. Boy, that's another blow for a guy who has been sensational for them today. Really all over the field. He's a sophomore just outside of Houston, about a 30-minute drive to Sugar Land, Texas. Hmm. Hopefully he can just... This has been a very physical game. We've seen a lot of guys literally needing help just to limp off the field here this afternoon. And how much more depth can you have at safety? I mean, Frazier's down. Julius White is being held off, helped off the field right now. We saw Tanner Leland carted off the field earlier. Uh, in this fourth quarter. They're especially short of the end positions we found out earlier this week and talking to the coaching staff. Well, they were minus three defensive ends. That's why they moved one of the safeties to end here to try to fill that void. Here comes the biggest third down of the game for the Rice defense. Down by two. It'll be third and eight. Chris out of the gun. Plenty of pocket protection. Too much time all day. And now, will it stay in bounds? Yes, and it'll be intercepted at the same time by Callahan. His second of the day. Well, they threw the flag there. Was there any kind of a late hit on Dane Crisp? Holding. Nope. 64 on the offense. That penalty is declined. First down. So instead of throwing it away at least, now, great field position, a short field, and maybe only two first downs away from a field goal attempt. Well, this just is not a poised play. I mean, this is a guy that started 10 games just two years ago at Notre Dame, but that's not any kind of a veteran play if he was trying to throw this ball away that was a that was a poor throw and if he's going to miss you miss long you miss long you just throw that ball out of bounds and you just go punt it away what what Rice did on that and they only rushed two guys on that play that's why he had all the time but they covered every receiver so now Rice with an opportunity to take the lead late 347 to play and they get it at their own 47 Ross trying to find something it's a gain of three, give him four to the 49. Tharp thumps him down. Now, one thing that Kansas has done throughout the day is they've rotated defensive linemen. They've rotated eight linemen throughout the day. So they should be fresher. They got the starters in there, Josh Williams down there, Jordan Tobai. Their starting defensive line is in the game. Two timeouts still left for each side. Don't have to rush as the play came in from the sideline. They're one of the great field goal kickers in college football on the sideline. Slight delay. Not much available again for Ross. Lubbock Smith waiting for him. The safety. You see, with under three minutes to go here, Joel, you're third and three. Third and a long three. I mean, you're in two down territory right here. I mean, you know, if you don't make this, you're not punting the ball away. So that you should keep that in mind when you make this play call. And it looks like the wind's at the back. It should aid Ross. 
or make that Boswell to go place kicker. Now, the third down and three in the flat. It's Ross. Can't make a miss. He's double teamed anyway. Coming up, Smith first, and then Haney cleaned up. You see, that, that throw by McCarr, it was behind Ross, and he had to stop and come back to the ball. You see Lovett Smith grabbing his knee. And that was the difference in the play. An accurate throw, Ross might have a chance to make somebody miss. Got to go for it on fourth down. That's what I said. It's two down territory, and here we go. What do they have up on fourth and four? Move the quarterback by design. Much formation out here to the right. Peterson to the backfield. He empties it now. Here comes the extra rusher, and in trouble. Can he get to the marker? Oh. Good move by McDonald. Got He's it. got the first down. Oh, Vance yeah. McDonald, a load of that, stopped on a dime. And the entire Rice bench just jumped up when McDonald made this play. Nice move right here in the open field. Take on two tacklers. And how about the strength of the throw backpedaling? I have no question. Now you got, got some real uh, arm strength to get that ball to him. They're not that many yards away from Boswell territory. Probably about somewhere around five yards away from his ability. 90 it's seconds and counting. Trying to take as much time off the clock as they can. In Turner Peterson, a yard shut down by Bakare. Let's check in with Jim Knox. All right, Joel, you talked about Chris Boswell before the game. I asked him, what is his distance? What can he hit? He said, right here, about 62 yards. This is the exact same distance he was doing before the game. That's what he told me. Well within his range right now. And it seems, Jim, like the wind is helping. Rice, option pitch, short, short side. Peterson is put down, but not out of bounds. And now, Kansas, do they start thinking about a timeout? They've got two on the board. Clock running down. Heaney with the shot again. And it'll be a timeout instead for Rice. So 40 seconds to play, a timeout remaining for Rice. But thought maybe the other side would think about it, using the timeout. Yeah, I mean, I think right now Charlie's just saying, you know what, they're just going to run it. They're not going to throw it here on third down. Uh, you know, and we'll take our chances. If Boswell, right now he's at about 54-yard attempt. You know, he's got six career field goals over 50 yards in college football. He made one from 53 last week. Today it's been fairly routine for Boswell. Hit early from 47. And the next one came from 29. And then same spot, a good hold by Klein Kubiak, who did a phenomenal job on a short snap as he got it up and that was also from 29 yards away so the 47 yarder had room to spare Kansas may be saving their timeouts to try to freeze the kicker you know if if they don't convert this third down it'll be third and seven I'd be surprised if he throws it quarterback draw Breaks the tackle. Big yardage now for the car. Got a block downfield and wisely goes down at the 25. Heads up play by the quarterback. Huge play because there was instant penetration and pressure right at the line of scrimmage and he avoided it. Look at this. Look at this penetration right here by the defensive end Josh Williams. Comes in there, gets his hand on him and he shakes him off. All he's going to do is position himself here for the field goal. Take yep. it to the middle of the field and get down. Smart. Exactly that. Very smart. So now get ready. Yep. As Bailiff is on the field. <laughs> he wants to wind it down. It's so good he can taste. Look at that smile. It's so good he can taste it. But the pressure is on. It's one thing making a field goal when there's no pressure. It's another thing when the entire game comes down to you. So now Rice. Out of timeouts, and it boils down to when they put it down about a 43 to 44 yard try in that neck of the woods for Boswell, their junior from Keller, Texas, 17 of 21 last year. His first of the season against UCLA last week was from 53 yards 53. away. Yeah. Now, remember, we, we talked about Klein Kubiak, the holder. He had to really take a bad snap in the last field goal for Boswell. Do an excellent job of getting that just upright for him to kick it. 
is not and, in and, automatic operation. And there's no question the timeouts up there are going to be used by Charlie Wise trying to freeze mm -hmm. Chris Boswell. So they're going to put time back on the clock. And they're going to say Kansas used a timeout and put a Rice timeout back up there. The Kansas tried to stop it earlier. Now, it, that doesn't hurt Rice if it's a bad snap right. to still have a timeout to cover it because you it is only on. second down. You can if you fall on right. it right and have the timeout. It's only one timeout left for Kansas. It'll be a 45 yard attempt for the lead. There it is. There's the timeout. And the timeout. The kick. Plenty of distance. Good timeout. Time out, KU. <laughs> yep. Well, he got he got a nice swing. You know, we through. saw this a lot. We saw this a lot in the NFL a couple yep. of years ago. I mean, Charlie was standing right next to the uh, the official there, and he waited to the last possible second to uh, to call that timeout. And we'll see. We'll see if Boswell can kick it just as straight and just as far as he did on that one. Well, after Boswell hit it and he walked back, none of his teammates went close to him. <laughs> they stayed away. Oh, yeah, no. They don't want to jinx him. Right. You know, they just want him in his own world. But then, if he makes it, you know, it's just one big game. You know, everybody will be jumping on him. He'll be the hero. But still, there'll be a kickoff to come if he does make it. It's been a gutty performance by Rice all the way around here today. They missed some opportunities in the first half. Now, oh, on second down with a timeout on the board. Burn Rice yeah, is going to take time off the clock because Kansas can't stop it again. Yeah. They'll burn, run it down to so about they, five right, seconds. Don't need a kickoff if it's good. Okay. I like the games. Look at the chest. There, uh, how do you make the tape? There it is. <laughs> if four is your lucky number, okay. it works for David Bailiff. Well, it's it's comes down to one kick. <laughs> so shot. in his sixth year at Rice, he's had some big wins. We've talked about it. Their first bowl win in 50 years, mm -hmm. first 10 win season since 1949, and this to stop an 11-game road losing streak against FBS schools. So it boils down to Boswell. It'll be a 45-yard attempt on the hole of Brian Kubiak. Now, for the win for Rice. It's on its way. And perfect. Rice has done it on the road in Lawrence, Kansas. <laughs> Look at that celebration. Absolutely clutch by Chris Boswell. And they earned that victory. It's disappointing for Charlie. They had their opportunities, but take nothing away from the Rice House, who were down 11 in this game and came back. Well, Boswell comes through in the clutch, set up by the interception by Callahan for a very short field at the end of the game. And our what a burger, what a player, what a shock. Chris Boswell, <laughs> four for four today, and the game winner from 45 yards away. Well, it's good for so many reasons. It ends the 11-game road streak. Here's a Conference USA team coming to the Big 12, you know, and beating a team like this. And look at this, this is just an absolute perfect operation. <laughs> I mean, he knew it right away. That hand, that fist went up in the air. He knew it as soon as he hit it. So turning things around and coming from behind of the second half, which they couldn't do with an opportunity against UCLA last week. Boy, what a huge win for David Bailiff and his staff. Let's check in now with Jim Knox and the winning coach. Uh, all right, thank you, thank you, Joel. Coach, he's just saying you're killing me. Talk, talk to us, the last second field goal, Boswell kicking it. What was going through your mind? You know what? He has been so automatic last year. Uh, last week when he missed one, it was just uncharacteristic. You really have a lot of confidence when you run him out there. We actually thought with the wind at our back, if we got him at the 40-yard line, we were in good shape. Long low road losing streak has ended today. Why? You know what? Because we played, you know, we made some mistakes, but we kept overcoming. We hung together. We persevered. 
you know, and it was one where we just played with great effort and at the end came up a winner. Just so proud of those Rice Owls, the fact they never gave up. There you go, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Joel. All right, Jim, thank you. That'll do it for Memorial Stadium for all of us. A 25-24 win as Rice comes back on the road. Look, it, it, he said all the right things, I mean, right there. I mean, they, they overcame and persevered today. Three first quarter turnovers. You, usually you don't overcome that. But I got to say, you know, they, they put pressure on the quarterback. They got the turnover late, and Boswell was clutch. Great lineup for us next week. Don't forget, uh, Baldy and I are going to be Oklahoma State and Louisiana Lafayette. Join us for Football on Fox next Saturday. And don't forget, later today on Fox, UCLA and Nebraska. Now for Brian Baldinger, Jim Knox, our entire crew, I'm Joel Myers. So long from Lawrence, Kansas. Thanks for watching. Fox College football and what a day it was for all of us and especially for the Rice Owls. Have a great weekend everybody. The following is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Texas Rangers and the Tampa Bay Rays. And welcome into Saturday night of Ranger Baseball along with Tom Grieve. I'm Steve Busby. Glad to have you along and it should be a good ball game tonight. It looks to be a close ball game as you would figure with these two teams. Low scoring affairs a lot of the times here at the drop. And uh, Tom Grieve tonight, uh, you Darvish trying to make a three good starts in a row for himself. Yeah, you know, he's really been throwing the ball well. He's definitely trending upwards. I think he could make a case that in the last three starts you've seen maybe his best stuff of the season. And his last start against Kansas City, that was definitely true. He retired the first 17 batters of that game. He had a terrific fastball. All his off-speed pitches were working. You go back a couple of starts, he had seven shutout innings in Arlington against Tampa Bay. In his last three starts, he's only walked four batters. When he cuts his walks down to one or two a game with the stuff that he has, everything else usually falls in place. Yeah, it'll be interesting to keep an eye on you tonight to see if he has command of that fastball the way he has the last couple of times out. Facing a Tampa team that in this ballpark has been a little bit limited, and you will keep them in that spot if he possibly can. Now Giovanni Soto will handle you Darvish tonight behind the plate. John Radigan will talk to the uh, Ranger backstop when we come back. We'll be right back on Fox Sports Southwest to the Rangers and the Tampa Bay Rays. The only thing better than seeing our delicious new popcorn chicken is tasting it. Keep your eyes on your own chicken. Come try our new popcorn chicken with sweet potato fries at Burger King, where taste is king.